Good evening, everyone. I'm Jeep Girls, and welcome to NEPA TV. Tonight, this is groundbreaking excitement. We have the very first games of the NEPA Pro Series. These are the most fantastic athletes in the sport in the world. So we are looking for some exciting gameplay tonight. First up, we have Echo Club Kansas City taking on the Florida Laser Sharks. And that is going to be a thrilling match. This is the first time we have seen these two teams pair up. And it's going to be amazing. I can't wait to see these players play. We are about to take a walk through our arena to tell you a little bit about Echo. Gravity, virtual reality sport that requires teamwork, skill, and communication to succeed. The arena features a spawn area where the game begins. Players enter the arena through a launch tube that has a catapult ring inside to increase speed. As they enter, the teams race to be the first team to get to the disc in the center, which is also called the joust. Players enter the arena full of geometric shapes that can be used strategically during a match. The three basic player positions are striker, midfielder, and goalie. Each player's echo unit is equipped with a thruster on each wrist, a booster on the back, and brakes to slow players down from the high speeds. Regrabbing or stacking is a common technique used in game. This is demonstrated when players use each other repeatedly in a slingshot motion to increase their speed. Another useful skill is stunning. This allows the players to temporarily disable the opponent's movement. Stunning can be countered by using the blocking skill, which causes the stunner to be stunned. As the offensive team progresses through the arena with the disc, the defending team protects their bubble, which serves as a three-point line around the goal. When players enter the bubble, all goal counts for just two points. When a team scores, the disc spawns on the opposing team's end of the arena to give them the just advantage. The rules for the NEPA Pro Series are a little different than what we're used to in normal Echo games. The games for the Pro Series consist of four eight-minute quarters, and the scores carry over each quarter for a cumulative total. The highest score after the fourth quarter wins. We will have a two-minute break after the first and third quarter and a five-minute halftime. There are no timeouts during the match, and teams have five rostered players, of which four are active in the arena at all times. The fifth one waits in the loading zone and comes in as needed. So, we are looking at Echo Club Kansas City and the Florida Laser Sharks tonight. Sir Dimwi, welcome. Palador, welcome. How are you guys feeling about this? Are you excited? I'm thrilled. Yeah, quite excited. Uh, and these, these two, uh, yeah, <laughs> these these two teams, uh, the players on these two teams uh, have been around for a long time, very well known here. Uh, starting off with that Echo uh, Echo Club Kansas City, it's going to trip me up, but also it reminds me of a. I always want to say Echo Club Day Kansas City, but uh, it's uh, this team here, KFC, Sweet Tooth, Zeus, Oculizator, Paranim, Oculizator, of course, their captain, picked ninth overall. Uh, this is an exceptionally talented team. Their roster runs deep here. Uh, I expect no matter who of these five. Five, they play in this game. I expect them to be performing at that top level. Uh, also notable, Zeus, uh, a teammate of mine from uh, 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 from uh, Seal League back way back when. Uh, actually, a gay uh, Powder casted us uh, back then when I played with Zeus uh, over that over that weekend, which was a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, very very exceptional uh, team here. Uh, this this uh, Kansas City team. Oh yeah, back in the days, didn't we? But I'm in the <laughs> days when I look at this team. You know, as a commentator, as a caster. I'm thrilled as a player having to face this team at some point. You know, it's kind of worrisome. You know, there's, there's some big firepower <laughs> on this team for sure. So I'm excited to see them and what they can do throughout this, this tournament, this series. And uh, of course, the blue team here, the Florida Lakers Sharks, led by Jay Walker, picked fourth overall uh, here with Andy W. Skinny Venom and Thunderfoot. Uh, Jay Walker, of course, uh, notable uh, from uh, previously uh, over a year long undefeated Ignite team, uh, only going down in the finals series a few weeks ago. 
Uh, of course, now here with the uh, the Florida Laser Sharks, also another notable player here I have played with uh, in the past, Venom, my old captain from Team Nova back preseason, season one. Uh, still talk to him, still friends with him. Of course, still friends with everybody in the game. Of course, Andy W as well uh, and Skinny, both uh, casters. Uh, we both casted with, uh, not you know, in the past. Yeah, absolutely. These guys have been every uh, been everywhere doing everything in the realm of Echo Arena and the competitive scene. Obviously, you have uh, championship players in in Jay Walker. You have uh, championship level players and casters. You have uh, YouTube presence, of course, in, in Venom. Uh, everyone knows Venom. Is it the real Venom? Probably. Probably. Uh, this is going to be a real fun time for sure, though. And... Uh, you know, what better way to start the season than with all these faces that we've known and loved over the years in Echo. So yeah, this this matchup here, I, I don't know what to expect uh, out of, uh, out of uh, you know out of the out of the matchup you know I expect a lot of uh, well I expect a lot of offense for one but notable mm -hmm. that uh, particularly for the World Florida Laser Sharks here having Andy W is a uh, is it's kind of it's it's a notable thing it's a little bit more than uh, basically Andy W is going to be bringing that what I call the synapse defense with him. Uh, any, anywhere Andy or Zach or uh, a few of them go, uh, YouTube as well, any of those players, anywhere they go, they bring that defense with them. That is a that is a, an incredibly adept defense, uh, one that's seen a lot of success, and I expect to see it deployed here. But against this, the offense uh, offensive potential from Kansas City Echo Club, uh, Oculus in particular, Paranem has one of the most unique shots in the game. Zeus, KFC, all these players, particularly good. Of course, Sweet Tooth, uh, uh, another master player. But this one, a quick headbutt here from the Florida Laser Sharks to kick us off down to the Kansas City zone, but turn right back around by Sweet Tooth. All right, well, welcome everybody to the Nepa Pro Series. A handoff play there to Jay Walker. This is the best of the best. And we're starting off with Jay Walker, one of the best of the best of Echo. There's a first. Quarters. We have uh, four quarters overall, each eight minutes long. So we'll be going for a, a little while yet. Sweet Tooth, quick pass to that left side too. They're going to go with a relay to kick us off here. They don't have anyone in the bubble. That chain, though, is going to bring in those back players. They're now in the bubble that quickly. Oh, nice setup there. A little bit off the mark. A couple suns coming out of the edge of the bubble. Somehow, Oculizator comes away with it and is going to overhand that one in on the sun out goalie for the two to tie us up here a minute in. Oculus Sater right uh, in the right place and the right pocket for that matter. One of those players, if you're not aware, some way, somehow, uh, a devastating machine on offense, but really such a well-rounded game now, obviously coming off of the uh, VRML championships, a new champion of North America in his own right, and just a phenomenal presence on the floor. Someone to watch out for here. Now the Laser Sharks coming out in a uh, kind of a defensive formation here. There's a, there was a stack of the 1-1-2 coming from Kansas City, but breaking through mid oh, is the Florida Laser Sharks off of that nice sequence there. Andy W behind the goal, Jukes one. Oh, big stop. I didn't catch you actually got the grab, but that's going to be KFC sending out and away. That is cleared all the way out off of that sky block and now finds its way to the far side where Andy W will recover it here for the Florida Laser Sharks. Sending this one up to Venom. Venom does not have a lane. There are three Kansas City players back in the bubble now uh, fully on defense. It's Kansas City as approaching it are the Florida Laser Sharks off balance at a disadvantage and they do lose possession though Jay Walker excuse me Oculus they're giving that one away to skinny I guess sunned out now a little jockeying for it <laughs> oh how about these grabs Tim we there are so many quick close range grabs in that midfield right now going on but it does cause some turnovers uh, back into the midfield where they just brawl and jostle for position KFC lining it up but fortunately grabbed by sweet tooth there was a goalie in the area there so wise grab they're gonna take advantage of this oh. number situation but they miss the pass and that will cost them the opportunity yeah, that'll cost that big opportunity. The bubble is this one makes it uh, Venom. Long shot there is going to be off the backboard. Andy Dewey's going to grab it. It's stopped. Oculizator is going to get it picked up and cleared out through that far side. Tim gets by the defense. We're going to have a stack race for it. No, it doesn't get by. Excuse me. Skinny was actually the furthest back there. Caught me off guard. Skinny now sending this one up. Unfortunately, it's off of the mark. Venom's not able to get it. The Jaywalker does. Stopped up, though, by those two defenders. Oculizator is going to get it picked up and set up a sweet tooth who will look to clear that one out, but it's off the key block, keeping it in the zone as uh, uh, slap there does get it through a stack in but a good leech but oh oculizator coming away with it empty goal sends it in for the three that's gonna put kansas city up by three 
And Alco Slater again making a goal. And the lone five points thus far for the team, this time fighting no defenders in the area, so didn't need to paint any pocket whatsoever. Uh, we still got four minutes left in this quarter. And with that, the both teams in this uh, debut match of the Pro Series still looking to find that full rhythm. But obviously the aggression, the pace is already there. You see them just blitzing back and forth on this floor. And yeah, no, another uh, defensive setup here from the Florida Laser Sharks. As they have one, uh, who's that, 29, Skinny. No, they have two players, number number 29. Organize your team numbers, by the way, as KFG is going to get this one turned over in the Kansas City zone. Sending this one out. We'll get this one cleared out, though. They don't have a stack together. Too many stuns coming out. I see a leech on that chain. That was a leech right there. Andy W coming away with that one. Same way over to Jay Walker, but stuffed by KFC. Bring this one in. They have an advantage. Goalie's out. Oh, the shot off the post. Skinny gets it picked up and sent in the hands of Sweet Tooth. Another ding, and Venom's going to get it picked up looking to clear it out okay fc going for the flash the flare but a flash in the pan and deep fried it is it will be oculus Sater though getting that back to the other side of the floor quickly is jay walker there meeting the interception himself so into maybe a punish off of that indeed Ooh. it will be the case so no flare on one end and it ain't fair on this end it's four points now on the board courtesy andy yeah that was a nice shot from andy hitting the other uh, top the, the top triangle on the backboard to get it right dead center of the goal so Florida Laser Sharks get another one on the board here. Notable, we're over halfway through the first quarter. We only have four goals scored total, although that is a, a goal a minute uh, from both teams combined. Sweet Tooth is going to duck two defenders, get this one sent out. They are already in the offensive zone, already at the edge of the bubble, and Andy Debbie is just going to pick the pocket there. Sends that one out. We'll see a race for it, but too many stuns in the backfield, too many stuns in the bubble. I see an orange, uh, orange stack gets leached there by Jay Walker. Who's going to get an opportunity? No, he's going to back this one out a little bit. Although they have a 3v3 right now in the bubble. A nice pickup there from Oculizator. He's looking to send that one out, but then they have Jay Walker, who is right there. Jay Walker ducking one, sends it in. Sweet Tooth got the grab, but was floating and will hit the uh, the goal plane. Florida Laser Sharks are going to take their first lead uh, since uh, that first goal of the game. Man, always a tough situation there. Sweet Tooth at least doing a good job to keep that concentration. Lost the anchor. Was kind of floating helplessly there for a little bit, but still managed to at least convert it to a two. So that's going to uh, keep this game uh, still mighty close. And uh, as it, they joust out now, uh, yeah, kind of goal for goal. Like I said, goal a minute. And uh, just patient on this offense right now up the floor as they will find the open connections a few different times. Of course, got a caster's curse it on that one, and it will be uh, reversed into the other end before it's picked off by Paranim again. Paranim sending this one across. I swear formation here. The defense very aggressive right now. They have two out of the bubble, but bringing it up. Sweet Tooth, nice placement. Skinny came out to play two hands, but that doesn't that that, that, that takes away basically that vertical jump from him. So he's not able to since he's not anchored, he's not able to push up to get that top corner pocket covered. That was a beautiful goal there from Sweet Tooth to put his team up by one once again. Yeah, and Sweet Tooth, a player of uh, three years competitive experience, played on Nebula and Gambit back in season one of VRML, and anomaly the past three seasons, working uh, his way into the master tier just about, what, five months or so ago back in May. Yeah, it's Andy W. stuffed there by Paranim, who's going to wrist flick that one out all the way down. They have the chain there to track it down. KFC with it. Anchor shot gets it for the three. And Kansas City is going to go up by four here with a minute to go in the quarter. All right, KFC now getting on the board this time, making it count, uh, facing the goal. <laughs> and able to make it. So with that, KFC, another player here for those somehow not aware. Of course, you should be because these are the best, but uh, one and a half years of Echo experience as well. Started off with the Outlaws back at that rookie team with the Quest 2, and uh, just every year got better and better. BRTK, but played there in, in the next season, and then Ethereal, master team this last season of VRML. Really worked his way up in a quick, quick succession. Oh, Jay Walker, I don't know how he got away from Paranim right there. Uh, she was in, in literally an inch away from getting that stun off on him as Andy on the far side. What disc movement. Wow. They earned that goal. A hook there from Venom to get it in top corner pocket. And Florida Laser Sharks are showing what they are capable of doing here is we're only going to have, looks like, eight seconds on the clock uh, once we come out of the tubes here. And uh, just a, that was just a really beautiful shot there from Venom yeah, on the goal as uh, looks like Kansas City. We'll have uh, one more possession here, probably the final possession, as Laser Sharks aren't coming out too aggressive. Looks like we're just going to end the round here 10 to 8 in favor of Kansas City as they send that one down to the floor. And with that, we have a quick word from our sponsors.
A lot of hard work goes into keeping things simple. We do the heavy lifting because when you're out there, you want everything to simply work. We build our machines tough to outmuscle the outdoors. And welcome back from that. You guys, that first quarter was incredible. So many people already have scored. I mean, it's it's not just one person. This this is phenomenal. It's no wonder these players are the best in the world. Well, absolutely. Uh, with that, I mean, it's close game. Uh, still on the whole, uh, 10 to 8, only two points separating. And this is, uh -huh. again, between the captains here. I mean, we're looking at a finals rematch from VRML Season 4 in that sense. So the familiarity is there. Uh, the relationships, the rivalries, they're there. And I don't think anyone is surprised by the fact that this has been uh, still a, t a tight game. I mean, only eight minutes expended, didn't we? We're right into the next round now. Here we go. Uh, here we go. And there it goes out the bubble. Sweet Tooth pulling out the uh, the train there. Jay Walker, a slap <laughs> shot is going to go off of the post. Uh, but what a, what an entry into this round here. That was quite a unique start there. I don't know. Sweet Tooth just has like the habit formed. Oh, Jay Walker going to get his pocket picked by Sweet Tooth. Opportunity here. KFC open goal. And that's going to be off of the Nestor down the floor. The uh, Oculus are picking this one up on the near side. Sending this one across. Sweet Tooth. Oh, what a setup. What a stop. There are too many bodies in front. Jay Walker gets it cleared out. Although I don't believe he was the one who got the stop. This one is now in the Kansas City zone. Oh, no. Jay Walker. Oh, that one's going to be off the cone up to the ceiling. Well, now Andy may be getting some uh, uh, hands on the disc there, able to get it. Jay Walker as well, tapping it over, trying to find Andy. Andy from the backboard, and Andy Sweet is candy that was. It's tied 10 to 10. I can't believe he had the angle there. That is, that is, that is a credulous shot. Did I use that right? I think I did. I'm going I'm uh, to... Indubitably. Like I indubitably. That was indubitably incredulous, didn't we? Incredulous. Incredulous or credulous? I don't know. Ooh, uh oh, yes. uh oh, uh oh. Oculizander does get that up to Paranum. I don't know how. I don't know what happened there. Uh, the Florida Laser Sharks chain intercepted a Kansas City chain. A lock shot here is going to go just high with that one from KFC. Jay Walker, though, gets it picked up, sending it out. KFC, though, with a recovery. Sends that one across. That's two bodies there. Does connect to Paranum. No, Paranum's going to get her pocket picked there by Jay Walker, sending this one back out. Sweet tooth. No, KFC tracking it down with that chain. Too quick. Skinny. Setting it out has Andy with them. Open goal. Andy does not take the shot. Wise decision. Oh, not wise enough. He's going to get stunned out there by Oculizator, who gets that slap back out to mid and through. Uh, Oculusator through mid, so Oculusator through the equator, I guess. And this is going to be a pickup by, well, guess who? Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth trying to get on that board. A quick flurry of moves, and in a hurry gets the shot. And 12 to 10. Goal for goal in this second quarter. You know, they are keeping this one close. I am I'm surprised. I'm not so surprised that the game is so close. I am so surprised that's that it's as low scoring as it is. And I know that might seem uh goofy to say so early, but I expected a little bit more scoring, not much more. A little bit more, though. Lock shot here from Andy W goes just low. Good recovery there by Oculizator in the bubble. Looking to turn this around. He's going to get away from that attacking player. Far side of his Jay Walker. If he does get this one cleared out, they have a chain to track it down. It will be in the hands of Sweet Tooth. Bringing it in. Hits it. Under pressure, but has plenty of room. Gets it in. Kansas City is going to go up by four. And that's a couple in a row for Sweet Tooth as well. So got to watch out for Sweet Tooth. Uh, as I was alluding to at the beginning of this stream, these this is a team here certainly that just has so many threats on the floor at any given time. It's exciting as a caster, but definitely threatening, frightening if you're one of these players playing against them. Uh, Andy W handling that one on the far side here for the Florida Laser Sharks. Has some room. Sends this one across right in the hands of Jay Walker. Jay Walker under pressure. Sends that one back across. They are now already in the offensive zone here. Very aggressive defense from Kansas City. They played a man all through mid there. Now an opportunity here for the Florida Laser Sharks. Jay Walker walks his way in. Does a little bit of a plie. Gets it in for the two. They're back within two. 
Well, if you please just open the doors for Jay Walker, able to put in all the moves, didn't we? Uh, one of those players who, of course, as part of Ignite, formerly Joker in previous years, I mean, they have they have Steve's moves named after them. So they're not shy of showing the flash, the, 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 the flare, and they can do it. Jay Walker can do it uh, with anyone, but also plays a great fundamental game. It's a nice balance. Interesting there, Sweet Tooth backing up. I'm not sure if that maybe it's a scuffed offensive opportunity. I see that they have three at mid there. They do back up a little bit here, go into more of a diamond formation. Oculus are sending this one up. Oh my goodness, what a pass. And that was a pass. That was right on. Paranum, getting the 1v1. You're not going to stop that shot. In for the two. Kansas City up by four. Yeah, that shot you alluded to, didn't we? The Frisbee style fling. Mm -hmm, now, you would think mm -hmm. for Echo Arena, obviously a disc based esport in uh, virtual reality here, you would expect. The natural throw for everyone. Wouldn't it be the default uh, for the Frisbee style? But no, not not really the case. Uh, it is, there's only a few players, I would say at the top level, maybe even just a couple who actually do that that style of throw, but Paranum really makes it work well. I only know of two, Paranum one, uh, a national agency over in EU is the other. I, 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 I couldn't even name a third. Uh, Skitty sending it across to Andy. Tries to duck. I don't know how he got that pass off, but he does. Jay Walker, though, has to track it down. Oh, what a pass there off of the wall. Venom's able to recover it. But sends it up to the ceiling and a nice slap there from Oculizator. He's going to get this one cleared out. This is a stack race. Are they going to get the leech? No, leech KFC gets it in for the three. And his team's up by seven. Hey, no leech, he teach. Grammar. 19 to 12, though, and we're approaching now the final two and a half of the half. Here, these eight-minute quarters of the format of Pro Series, which uh, so far, as a viewer, as a commentator, and as a player, doing these in scrimmages, it's been a pleasure. It's a, it's different from the the norm. Although we've touched on similar formats with Pizza League way back in the day, a community ran uh, for Fun League. We mentioned at the beginning of the stream, but I, I really like these formats. There's been so many close games, didn't we? Oh, there really have been, and uh, it's 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 an even playing field by a different. Uh, standard than uh, what Party League did, both operating on this kind of even playing field uh, concept, but the, with the draft and everything, you end up with actually even teams that don't need any sort of handicaps going in, and you get games that are this close. What a shot there, Jay Walker. That was kind of a uh, signature of his as it goes wide. He's able to recover it here on the near side. Oculus had a pressuring and sent across there, Skinny. As KFC pressuring, a send in, trying to get it to a teammate, does not connect. Paranum though, gonna, that one's off of a head. And KFC will get it cleared out through the near side tube, actually not out, off of the lip, keeps it in the zone. KFC recovers his own clear, gets it out, but still only barely. Sweet Tooth, opportunity, sends it in, looks high, is high and wide. It will be Andy W to pick it up, looking for the clear, does get it out to mid there to Venom. He just dumps that one out to Jay Walker. Excuse me, Jay Walker. Nice dismoving here from the Laser Sharks. So that that send back is going to end up back in the hands of Kansas City. And that will maybe oh, open oh, the doors oh, oh, for a three. Although struggled on the gather, this will allow the opportunity for a couple defenders to get in the zone. So Sweet Tooth will back it out as a result. They still have some numbers here as a thing. So they can push, they push, and they will push ahead even more. 21 to 12. It took them an extra second to gather, but uh, whoever that was in the midline, I wasn't looking, but someone was delaying those stacks uh, for, for the blue team very, very well to enable that number's advantage. Try to get a read on it. Couldn't catch the number on the, on the replay there. That's three unanswered goals here from Kansas City. Well, the Laser Sharks really need to, uh, to, to score on this drive. They don't want to go into the, to the overtime uh, with that sort of uh, history. Skinny, nice disc from here. Pocket. Oh no, he's gonna get stopped. Oculizator, no oh. look. Goes wide. You can't steeze. You can't steeze in this league. KFC hits it for the three. Oh, he almost did. Well, we've seen a, a no look behind the back from KFC attempted, and now Oculizator. Those two are the ones involved in this last scoring play. But yeah, like like we said, these players they are so skilled. And at the same time, there's so much, so much pride in their game. You know, they, they want to put on those kind of uh, displays sometimes just to kind of establish their dominance, nothing else. If you make them, they give you the mental points at the very least and uh, that advantage. But that said, the advantage as we wind down this half, didn't we? It is doubled up. Uh, Kansas City ahead 24 to 12. Yeah, with a 12 point lead here, Kansas City looking good going into this half. Speaking of that, we have a quick word from our sponsors. We will be right back in just a moment. Make this the summer of no limit, no stone unturned, and no obstacle unconquered. The summer of sand on the floorboard and mud on the tires, where one wave introduced you to a thousand friends 
you didn't know you had. And one spirit of adventure took you places you hadn't dreamed existed. Make this the summer you discovered there's only one. Make this the summer of Jeep. Make this the summer event. The NEPA Charity Cup, a LAN event you don't want to miss, will be March 18th through the 20th in St. Louis, Missouri. Bush Stadium hosts the NEPA Charity Cup, supporting Special Olympics. So come on out to the Redbird Club for the LAN event that will put faces to the names that you interact with in the community and help support a great cause. Head over to NEPAVRPro.com for more information. That is going to be fantastic. And I believe we have Heck in the Twitch stream saying that he is going to be a tour guide when we get there. So that's fantastic. I had a moment this week to catch up with Timber F15 and had a little chat with him. So I'd like to share with you what he had to say. So let's take a look. Well, honestly, we're, you know, it started way back probably about two years ago. Um, I'm certainly not a gamer, uh, but I bought my, my 15 year old an Oculus headset and, uh, he started playing it and then he said, Dad, you need to check this game out called Echo Arena. Uh, and I tried it after I got over, you know, trying to learn how to do it. And then I realized that this thing was much more than a game, that it was absolutely a sport. And then after watching it and watching what was going on in different different community leagues and stuff, I started to realize that it's more than just a sport. It's a spectator sport. And so we looked at, you know, what what are people watching out there? Uh, and professional sports is one of those. And we thought that this could easily become one of that. Now you play some as well, because we've shared a few a few pubs. What do you think about the game? I think it's fantastic. Um, I think it's extremely fast. And uh, when you say I play, I use that term loosely. Uh, I certainly don't play nowhere near what our pros play at, but uh, I'm, I'm barely uh, barely even an amateur. Um, but that, that game is amazing from, from just the, the, the strategy that's involved, the teamwork that's involved, the communication, um, it is, you know, I, I even, even when saying a game, it, it makes me think that that is just the wrong description. It's a sport. Well, I think we're going to learn a lot this season, um, with NEPA and, um, certainly on NEPA TV, uh, how we're, how our broadcast is going to grow, how the teams are going to grow and the players are going to grow. Um, so, you know, it's a, the expectations are that the organization is a professional organization and it continues to uh, strive to be as professional as we can be. And uh, I think that with the people we have both that are playing on our pro teams and, and the support staff that we have behind it, I, I absolutely believe they will be met. If you could tell the pro series players one thing today leading into this opening, what would it be? Well, that's a great question. Look, so let, let's, let's separate it out into two pro players. So for our, all of our NEPA pros, uh, I think that what I would tell them is that there is a reason that they are on these teams and, and very excited that we get to, to show everyone else why they are on these teams. Um, to the Florida Laser Shark pros, I say, go get them. How is it being a team owner of the Florida Laser Sharks? Uh, it's fantastic. Um, first, uh, obviously, our players, we, you know, we have a relationship with a couple of the players and we're building relationships with the others. But, you know, to, to watch your team grow and compete, uh, it's it's more than being a fan. It is just uh, you get a connection with the team, its outcome, and, and you really want them to do well, both in the arena and off. I think the future is very bright. Uh, we have started with 12 teams and, and I anticipate that to grow. Uh, and we plan to be around for a while. So if you aspire to do it, it's something that can be done. And he obviously, <laughs> he has his, his team who's rooting, he's rooting for tonight, but he's rooting for everyone. So you guys, this game, they went from a 10-8 lead after the end of the first quarter to now a 24-12 lead here in the second quarter going into the half. Talk to me. Tell me what tell me what's changed. Oh, well, these teams, uh, not to be too much of a dead horse, but um, going back to the whole style of this format, I think the, the biggest thing is, and as a player also experiencing these in, in scrims recently, it really, really is all about the, the scoring runs. It's no team is going to uh, dominate most times for an entire uh, match. So 
a lot of this, I, I, would, I would almost call it the natural flow of things. Uh, I don't know if you agree, Dimly, but it's just, it's, it, it has that, that likeness to uh, any sport in real life, in uh, traditional style sports that you see on TV, where uh, teams, you know, they're going to go on runs. It's just being able to withstand them and then recognize you have a lot, lot, lot of time on the clock. Yeah, I mean that, that's really that's really what it is. You're, you, what I what what I think is really going to come out from this league, in particular, with these long form games in this format, with with the with the basically even teams, is you're going to see a lot of a lot of players develop that tenacity uh, that they don't really need to have in a system with uh, with with you know, every round the points reset. They don't need to worry about coming back. They can just start over in the next round. That's not the case in this league. And in this league, I think you're going to see certain players develop that tenacity and it's just going to be, become a part of the game to them it's going to change the way they see things that's kfc oh off of the head that was first off the post then off the head of the goalie skinny and now skinny is going to get that one uh, set out of the bubble all the way down that one is out to mid no one's collecting it yet andy w gets there sending it out is that going to be on no off of the nest to the near cyber venom will recover that's some beautiful defense there played at the other end. Skinny able to get that clear eventually and now receiving the disc down below at the trench. So Skinny works it up and finds that pass to Jay Walker. That's going to be a guarantee more often than not. That's some, uh, just beautiful, quick action off that turnover, didn't we? And that's what, uh, what she want to do. Don't give the defense time to get perfectly set up and aligned. Uh, if you have those advantages and the defense is kind of, you know, quick to get back or not quick enough, just, just press it. Don't let them settle. Yeah, I mean, yeah, keep the, if you cast a, the defense off balance, oh no, Jay Walker. That is what he's good at. That right there, Jay Walker's end of the game, though, the send out Sweet Tooth gets that one grabbed. Oculus in here, looking for that long send in. It's off of the bow tie, will be collected by the defense. Portal Laser Sharks, Andy W sending that one up to Skinny. He's trying to get that one through mid. Although at mid, it will uh, bounce off the, the nearby Geos. Paranum is going to flick that one through off the near side wall, all the way down and in. And defense is going to get their first ones again. Both teams kind of. Uh, quickly clearing these and clearing them into the hands of the other teams. There's a stack at mid already ready to track that one down, but they get broken up. There's a blue chain right behind them. Who's going to get their first nice play? Venom! But Venom going to get his pocket picked by Paranim. Paranim stopped up a little bit by Skinny, but Andy W is going to get it recovered and center all the way back to Jay Walker on that reset as they now press in again on offense. And uh, as they do press it on offense here, will be Venom oh. finding the nice play and pressing is Andy W. And that's uh, 16 on the board now. One little thing I want to note too, on the, uh, originally when Venom lost the disc there, one of those subtle things, but you see it every now and then, uh, got the disc, but then had to switch over to the dominant hand uh, so they can move around easier around the Geo. But that little switch is what caused the turnovers, and you bring up the, the clearing that's happening here, and the quick interceptions and, and whatnot. A lot of those little plays that just take half a second to execute, well at this highest tier of gameplay, those half seconds will kill you. Now, that said, back into the top. It's going to be picked off here by Sweet Tooth, and it will drop right down below. Fantastic That's... goal there by Sweet Tooth from Oculus. Xander. Yeah, I'm back, Valley. I don't know what happened there. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, uh, beautiful goal there. Uh, I thought Paranum. I you. It's someone we said, no, no, no. I just suddenly, I must have hit something. I don't know. Suddenly, I couldn't hear anything and uh, couldn't talk. So we are uh, back here. 10 minutes, or excuse me, a 10-point lead here to the Kansas, uh, to Kansas City. As, uh, we're only uh, two, a few minutes off the clock here. Three minutes off the clock, actually, is Andy W. Nice little give and go there to get away from KFC. That was Andy and Skinny. At least I think it's Skinny. There's two no number 29. It's going to have been Venom. As Jay Walker sending this one to the near side. Yeah, I brought it up again. Skinny sending that one over off the boot into the hands of Andy. Oh, they've got an advantage here. Four in versus two. Top corner pocket. They get it in, and they're back with an eight. And big emphasis on those cuts. That is what brought them success on that play. They had two different cutters. Jay Walker, the, the recipient there, uh, also had, I believe it was Skinny available. But uh, in any case, you see that. Uh, if Skinny was cut off well by the defense, because they had these simultaneous cuts, they had another option to find. Otherwise, that would have been a tough finish uh, off that pass. And, uh, oh, trying to get that one to uh, Oculus. It was KFC. It's off the mark, but pairing him. Is able to recover. Sweet Tooth pressing in on the bubble, but the defense saw it. He's covered. KFC pressing in, looking for a cut. Oh, actually went for the shot as the goalie was getting stunned out there by Sweet Tooth. 
We recovered here. Jay Walker will get a clue down through the near side, too. This one's all the way down. We're going to have a proper stack race for it. No, Skinny getting there by himself. A shot goes quite wide. Alkalizator chasing that to the ceiling. Recovered for Kansas City. Has to get away from, who is that? Right on him. Venom there. No, it's Andy W. Excuse me, Alkalizator. Sending that one out. Whoa, that's a wall shot. No, that's a clear to sweet. Open goal opportunity. Stopping up in front. No, up the backboard. Sweet Tooth is going to get it. That is a beautiful goal there. Kansas City, and they are back up by 10. And didn't have much time to spare before those stacks were back in the area, but managed to get it done nicely for Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth putting down some scoring here now. Uh, the lead scorer thus far in this match with 10 points. KFC not uh, far behind with 9 as well, and on the other side, Jay Walker with 8. Uh, but definitely a lot of points. Sweet Tooth is someone you gotta watch out for. That's starting to catch that heat. Oculus hitter there, far side. Oh, no, they're going to joke or train this. Go gets it off the of KFC. Juking around the shield. Gets it in on the stun out goalie. That was dirty. That was quick. That was, uh, that was a deed done dirt cheap. Kansas City's up by 12. Yeah, and uh, the, that initial joker train uh, being derailed there by none other than Jay Walker saying, hey, I know that move and I don't like it. Uh, not when other people do it at least, but didn't matter at the end of the day because they still were able to break away and secure that shot. Now, another defensive setup here, though. They're going to clear this one out. They're looking to get the stack together for the Laser Sharks are, and they inadvertently turned that one over. I'm not sure what happened on that last pass because they didn't have the stack together, so that clearly wasn't the initial plan. Uh, they were set up defensively. Probably looking to, to stun out the Kansas City chain, although this Kansas City chain hasn't been too aggressive on the defensive rollouts either. KFC is going to get this one picked up here less than two minutes ago in the third quarter. KFC stunned out by Skinny. Skinny's going to get an opportunity if he gets it quick enough. Goal is open. Sends it in. Oh, it goes very low. And that one's going to be uh, wide again. Slapped out. I believe it was KFC. Does get it out, but in the hands of Venom. Venom's going to look to press this one in. Has a far side option there. And he hits Jay. Cuts. Oh, off the post. That is a heartbreaker. Makes its way out of the bubble. But Venom, once again, gets it picked up. Looking for an opportunity. You know, Paranem gets the stuff in the clear. And with that, maybe even an opportunity again at some numbers uh, advantages. There it is. Two on one. T change it to a three on two. Three on three, perhaps. And everyone filing in so they will opt for uh, this back out. Just delaying the time enough, and uh, they have the option on that back pass. If they want it, they might oh need my. it, might not. It's getting bold with it, and then decides to dump it off at the end once they broke away. Uh, putting on the ankle breakers before getting it back. There's Oculus Sater. Uh, it looked like uh, Oculus there had something personally against Skinny there. Oh, no, he's going to do it again. This time to Jay Walker, though. Jay Walker's not going to let him get away with it. Paranem handling this one, sending it across here to KFC. Looking to bring it in on the bubble. Oh, no, too many bodies in the bubble. I don't even know what happened. Oh, okay. Oculus there, underside of the goal, gets it in. Bottom corner pocket. They're up by 14 as we approach the final minute. I think a bear is mentioning here for, uh, of course, Oculus Stater touched on it earlier on. Uh, but a player who's been tenured in Echo Arena for a very, very, very long time. We're talking since the very beginning, so about four and a half years now, Oculus Theater has been there. Known as a, an offensive powerhouse, but again, now known as a, a champion in VRML. Now known as a player who has a well-rounded game everywhere and can just damage you in so many different ways as that shot will as well, but no! Dancing blow! No goal and Oculus Theater the rebound! Yeah, Ox going to get that one set up there. Sweet Tooth, Lox, shot, looking a bit low. Off the nugget, in fact, as uh, Jay Walker gets it picked up. Looking to send this one out. Does get that one off of the ceiling. Goes just wide. Oh, that was very close. But Oculizator gets it picked up one more time. Going to bring this one around. Get away from the defense and end the round there. Kansas City are going to end th the third quarter up by 14 points. And uh, with that, we have a quick word from our sponsors. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. One American with a burning desire to save the world from high prices. He is the stuntman that saved the world. A man that brought the world together because of his love for Honda. One man with four wheels strapped to a parallel twin engine. The stuntman that saved the world. Get your favorite Honda motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides today at Holzhauer Pro Motorsports in Nashville, Illinois. Friday nights at 1030 Eastern, head over to nepavrpro.com slash late night for late night with Ivan Thrive. You never know what you might see when Ivan sits down with your favorite Echo Arena players and teams. Head on over to nepavrpro.com slash late night Friday nights at 1030 Eastern to catch late night with Ivan Thrive. Such a fun show. Almost as fun as this incredible game in that in that. 
the second half so far, we have seen Sweet Tooth coming in, Paranyms coming in, KFC, the whole Echo Club Kansas City team is there. And Jay, Andy have, have been killing it for the Florida Laser Sharks. And here we go. This is it. This is for all the marbles right here. The fourth quarter. Let's go. All right. Well, we'll see what they can do. Thank you, Jeep Girls. And uh, Dimwi, we're into the last round, the last quarter of our debut game in this pro series. And quickly on that score, <laughs> Jay Walker just painting that corner. Anyone watching at home, you see, we've seen a handful of these dings uh, missing off those corner of the post, but it's because these players, they know they need to be hitting the far extremities of that goal. They want to get it past those very talented goalkeepers. Yeah, they are. They are very. They're keenly aware, uh, particularly how long they've all, all probably been playing together. Uh, actually, not probably have been playing together. Is that one sent all the way down? Paradigm is going to get a collected opportunity. Oh, the steep shot. That was a zero angle. The KFC second opportunity gets that one in for the two. Going to keep his team up. Fourteen points ahead. Paradigm does get the assist there. And uh, yeah, Kansas City are really looking good here in this fourth quarter. Though still in it, the Florida Laser Sharks. They can mount this comeback. They just they they need to start pushing those turnovers in the mid. Yeah, yeah. And if anyone's going to force turnovers in mid, it's going to be a team with Jay Walker on it. I've long regarded Jay oh, yeah. Walker as one of the best midfielders in the game. And, and so. this is extending this is extending to years uh, because that was one of the most significant things oh. about uh, any jaywalker team ignite or uh, joker or otherwise is that they were so good with the unconventional the unusual you know being great at midfield before there were people great at midfield defense and just carrying it over now into uh the rest of the, this uh, this tournament oh, and maybe Ooh. even open shot but skinny just missing that one yeah, and just to, just to, just to finalize on that, just to kind of carry on that point, just to, to cap it here. Uh, that the, back when I played with Venom on Nova, but the preseason, the season one of year, Melock shot off the barrier into the bubble. Uh, Venom there getting oh, stunned out. Okay, oh, she. Oh, what the heck? What an incidental save there by Andy W. That was out of the bubble. And Venom's gonna get it picked up and turn around. But I remember that we played Joker once, uh, maybe twice. I think it was once. And I remember as a quarterback, I I was I hated Jay Walker because I could not get the disc by him at mid ever he knew where i was putting it before i did and uh, every single time he would get me intercepted as that one's going to get cleared out in the kansas city bubble and collected there by oculus and it turns it around again and some wild plays there all the meantime didn't we but not translating into a goal there although uh -oh. here it just might it will be oh, oh no the miss there by paranym will walk it in but maybe he thought about it too much and that is one of the problems you do run into sometimes is when you're suddenly operating on thought instead of in instinct and you have to think about your shots oh. and now placing that right off the post says oculus later another rebound some really you know, near makes here but no in situation in situations like that you just need to pull out the grammy shot the one that you're all <laughs> the shot that everyone's taught first move towards the goal and push it away from your chest you don't need speed all you need is accuracy to hit those threes as venom edge of the bubble here looking for a setup as what across goes a skinny goal is wide open skinny gets it for the two their team is back with a 12 with only a few minutes to go here that is a tall order five minutes ago in this game in the match i don't know if they're gonna yeah. be able to do it well you see what else you can do on those what you can do if the long range bombs aren't falling you just cross it in cut and make a near uh, near range goal right on the open one so great job to break that a uh, brief scoring ice for both these teams after a couple of dings and now they're just gonna work their way around the midfield but you're right didn't we it's gonna be a tall order we'll see if they can overcome it or not Oliver ending uh, jokingly asking if they uh, if they made the uh, the post bigger in the last update. No, but they should make the goal smaller. That's a whole other point. Oculus hit around the ceiling here, <laughs> looking for a cross pass. Doesn't have an option yet. Nobody was moving in. They were kind of. I just watched Oculus Hater's teammates watching him play. That's what just happened there. That's why he had no option. They started moving once they realized that he had no options, but that it was already too late there. That one's gonna get turned over. Jay Walker open goal lock shot. Oh, picked off there. Sweet Tooth gets in the lane. Turning that one around here. Four minutes ago, that one's off the barrier. Maybe an opportunity. Okay, KFC with a good recovery gets it cleared out. And you know, that's one of the, the issues, uh, I, I, I suppose you'd call it, and obviously Oculus Skater, uh, fantastic in terms of mobility and juke ability. But that's one of the things that you will notice sometimes if uh, players do get caught up too much in holding the disc and, and juking, even if they're capable, it can have that, that lapse effect on the, the teammates who kind of got caught, like, as you said, disc watching, uh, not staying mobile and, and uh, open for those passes. So it can be kind of a double-edged sword <laughs> when you're playing that type of game. 
I don't know what KFC was thinking there. I don't. He must not have seen Venom. Uh, maybe it was just my my my, uh, my caster's angle bias. As Andy W pressing in at one v three right now, uh, we'll get stunned out at the edge of the bubble. Actually, it was a two v three at Skinny Far Side, but still not a strategic, uh, not 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 the strategic situation you want. The Paranem, another open goal opportunity. Three is open, sends it in, hits that one, gets it in. And that's now a twenty. Excuse me, a fifteen point here to Kansas City with less than three minutes to go. They, uh, excuse me, the Florida Laser Sharks are running out of time in their opening game of this Pro Series season. And a good shot there by Perrin. And this time, it's a little bit closer to that center, uh, making sure that they capitalize. And unfortunately, well, that's just gliding by KFC, hitting the brakes. And now breaking it open for a 40 point hit now with two and a half remaining. Uh, you know, in, in VRML with those quarters, those re or the round resets, I usually say the 20-point mark is kind of where you look at for each round uh, to say, okay, this team is definitely in the groove. They're going to win. I would say in, in the context of NEPA Pro Series, uh, anytime you start seeing 40, first of 40 wins, I'm going to say a lot of the time, at least based on experience so far. You know what? Now that you said that, it's in my brain, and I'm going to be challenging the crud out of that. As Jay Walker sends this one in, because now I want to know. I want to know if that's going to be consistent here. Uh, first it's like in basketball. Wins. It's like in basketball. They say first to a hundred wins. I don't know what about other sports, but it's just I've like never a heard certain. That. Yeah, uh, it's it's just a certain like um, percentage of the time. More often than not, the team that reaches this threshold, uh, you can solidly say they're probably feeling really good, uh, and you're not going to see you know, too often go the next way. But I'm I'm willing to be challenged on that, didn't we? Yeah, keep some tabs on me. Keep me honest. Uh, we'll keep some tabs. <laughs> uh, also, uh, just mathematically speaking, it looks like uh, this game will be the hands of Kansas City. One more goal here will absolutely uh, put the cap on that. But I'm fairly certain <laughs> that went off of the head. Uh, Finding its way to the far side. Also, just kind of on that point of basketball, I have heard uh, in recent years basketball has has realized that opting for threes uh, is 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 more rewarding than they used to think. And now uh, there's one team that recently hit 50 percent of their shots came from the three came from the three-point line i wonder if uh, if that logic which translate into echo arena if anyone's willing to test it I, as an oculator hits that one for a two puts the I'm team up by 20 that. points here that's a that's a good point you make and actually it's uh very apt to the, these rosters right here and specifically you're talking about well for instance jay walker okay uh because going up against joker years ago it was the same kind of case uh this, these are players, and even, you know, extending, extending to Oculus Hater as well, but these are players where they were not afraid to take those kind of shots, and even sometimes on goalies, right? Going for the goalie stun and then trying to pocket a three a bit bold. Uh, but we're seeing it more often now in Echo as time goes by. A nice save there by Sweet Tooth. And I think more and more people realize, hey, it's not always a bad idea to go for it if you can do it at a nice uh, clip, and they do. They do is uh, maybe one more goal here. There it is. Sweet tooth. We'll get the last goal of this game. And in fact, Kansas City, Echo Club, Kansas City in their opening game is going to defeat the Florida Laser Sharks, not just by a bunch of points, but by double 44 to 22. Absolutely unbelievable scoreline there as we end this matchup. Wow. And uh, with that, we have a, a another no, that's right. We're just coming right back. No, no pause for our sponsors. We're coming on now. Uh, yeah, what? A, I mean, what a what a performance there from Kansas City Echo Club. Though it's what what kind of stands out to me a little bit. And uh, another way of Jeep back here. Curious of uh, maybe maybe Jeep has a note. Although I, she, 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 yeah, now that I put her on the spot. She's gonna be angry with me. No, not really. Uh, <laughs> but I, the, the the Florida Laser Sharks early on they kept up with the Kansas City Echo Club. With Echo Club Kansas City, I'm sorry, I'm going to do that forever. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm kind of curious, like, what happened mentally early on for, for that to happen? Maybe it was, uh, I mean, do you think there was a collapse? Or, or, or uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know what to think because it looked like a close game uh, in the, that first quarter. Well, they, they had a very close game the first quarter, and then Echo Club Kansas City kind of ran away with it there in the second half. And then Florida Laser Sharks came back to shrink that lead a pretty good bit in the third quarter, and it was reachable. It was attainable. Fourth quarter, Echo Club Kansas City just turned it on, and, I mean, th they were scoring faster than I could write down their scores. <laughs> <laughs> so that is phenomenal play and super Super fun for the night. You guys, who do you think is the dominant turkey tonight? 
Well, if I uh, had to put put it on one player, now there are some good candidates as as always. There mm -hmm. will be a lot, but uh, honestly, I'm I'm gonna say for me, Sweet Tooth. Uh, I, I feel like really wow. played within the flow of the game. Now I, I know Oculus Later had some dominant stats. Don't get me wrong there. But I'm feeling like Sweet Tooth really just played in a good flow, was hitting at a high clip, like made the most out of the opportunities that they got. Not to mention the seven saves. Uh, just, you know, played just in a nice flow. Even keeled, uh, not holding, uh, you know, onto any any miss opportunities, missed shots. It was just, you know, constant. And, and really Sweet Tooth in two different quarters had spurred it on many runs to kind of start them going again. So that's my that's my justification. What about you? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to disagree on this one. Originally, I was I was kind of leaning towards KFC. He had five assists, 14 points. Oculizator, another oh, yeah. uh, good pick there. 11 points, six assists, four saves. That is a really good stat line. But as you notice, you know, not everything comes out on the stat line. You know, it kind of reminds me of the game the other day of that exhibition match where iFoxy popped off. Only had a couple points oh, yeah, on the board. Yeah. It wasn't about scoring. It was about how effective you are on the field. And and Sweet Tooth's transition game in this one was phenomenal. Uh, kind of like how iFoxy's was the other day. Uh, so with the when you contribute, you also look at this the, the the seven saves, the number of points he put up on the board. I think Sweet Tooth is the is the uh, the absolute uh, dominant turkey in this one. Although I mean, like, as you said, the the argument can be made for a lot of players in this game. Sweet Tooth stood out the most to me in this one. I agree. I agree entirely. The that <laughs> I'm I'm so shook by this game tonight. This was a lot building into this to see these players in this arena tonight as the Nepa Pro Series, and to know that these guys are and girls are the best mm -hmm. at this game in the world. And Palador, that includes you, because you're you know you're one of them <laughs> as well as being one of us. But the Can't gameplay is. <laughs> <laughs> we got you, Pally. <laughs> uh, but to to you know to see this and to be here in this arena, there's been a buzz all day, and everybody has been thrilled and excited, and you can see it in the players. You've seen it in the discords all day. Everybody has been thrilled, and I'm 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 happy to be here, and I'm happy to be here with you guys. And I believe our next match we have coming up is the Dallas Knights as they take on the Montreal Freeze. So that is going to be another fantastic game that I am looking forward to for sure. And you guys, if you are, are watching this, <laughs> the Freeze, uh, stand by. Don't go anywhere. Take a second to grab a drink, grab some popcorn, whatever. Hang out with us. we got a couple more games, two more, in fact, tonight in the Nepa Pro Series. And I'm not going anywhere. You guys, y'all are going to be here. So we're in it for the long run tonight. So please hang out with us, join us, keep us company in the Twitch chat, and we will be right back. At the 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 8 o'clock Central Time hour. See you in a few moments.
Welcome back, everybody. Sorry about that. We have another fantastic matchup for you. We have the Dallas Knights as they take on the Montreal Freeze. Now, we already have some Twitch chat going on that is talking about how the Knights are about to experience a freeze. We've got a lot of banter going on. Uh, this is going to be a fun match. So I'm looking forward to it. We have a lot of players in here that we know. And this is going to be another great one. I hope everybody is ready for this. Yeah, ready indeed. Uh, of course, on orange here, the Dallas Knights, uh, speaking of which, uh, led by Mozzie, number 12 uh, in the draft. Uh, last in that first round, of course, first round is first round. And Mozzie uh, leads up quite the team here. Light has come. Uh, his team uh, in, in, uh, in the, uh, excuse me, in VRML uh, got into the finals. Of course, you're here with Caesar, the Law, and B-Love. B-Love, the OG, Triple OG, the original OG uh, in Echo <laughs> Arena here. Uh, this is an exceptionally talented team, as I always say. Uh, uh, you know, Light has come. Actually, I used to uh, uh, coach, uh, not coach, but, uh, you know, kind of help back in uh, his first season, back in season two. And, uh, yeah, actually played with uh, B-Love on a team for, like, a weekend. Uh, was probably one of the most uh, effective defensive, uh, kind of uh, defensive. He, he has a very specific defensive role, uh, not rollout. Uh, but strategy that I think is uh, really unique uh, that you, you will probably see here. It involves a chain. <laughs> Well, indeed, uh, and, and B-Love always bears mentioning too, we bring the Echo and sports comparisons. Now he competed in the original X Games. I mean, talking about some mm -hmm. competitors, we got him. On the blue side of things, we got him as well. You know what we have? We got a couple of champs there. Uh, we got Ender and Cruzen now fresh off as well, just like Oculus Sater in that last match. Ender and Cruzen, uh, teammates in VRML with Oculus Sater as well as Trembitsky, uh, earning that North American Championship. Uh, so obviously, obviously the chemistry already is going to be tremendous from these two players. Then you add in the likes of Zux and Fire Ninja, uh, some top caliber players of their own right. And you can expect this team to be a tough one to contend with. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I've, I've always been maintained Ender, one of the best uh, offensive players in the league, one of the best players overall at a cruise and uh, probably uh, now I'm defenders. waiting for stats to prove it, prove it. But I'm waiting, uh, you know, Cruz and probably the best goalie in the league. Although we'll have to wait until, uh, as, I, as I understand, we're collecting stats. So I actually want to see how that plays out over the season. Uh, but Cruz, I expect Cruz to be up there, if not at the very top. Uh, and of course, uh, Ender, I, I got to also have to mention uh, Ender is one that I used to judge my own defensive performance based on. I used to see him in pubs all the time. And I was always Ender on the other team, me on uh, on, on my team. And I always played defense in pubs and I would, I would go 1v1 against Ender. And if I could defend Ender, I knew I was at a competitive level. Uh, but that was, of course, you know, two years ago. Uh, so we're going to get started here uh, in the modern day. In this first quarter of four here, Zux is going to get that one there for the freeze. Sending that one in. Light is coming, looking to track it down. But it will be picked up here by Fire Ninja. Oh, no. And, oh, what a read there, Caesar. All the way through. All the way through. Now, I just want to say, didn't we? No one defends Ender. Uh, not for very long, anyways. <laughs> not for very long. Instead, it'll be a defender bender anytime you try. That said, no defender in that goal. Mozzie's going to get it by for the first couple. Yeah, Mozzie getting an easy two there to kick us off here in this first round. Is this going to be a night of orange teams? You know, fun fact, for a while, it's not true anymore, but for a while, the aggregate stats from the game, from pub matches, saw orange team winning 1% more often than Montreal Free, excuse me, than the blue team. It's 51 to 49 in favor of orange for some reason. That has washed out since then. Fire an opportunity there from Ender. So it was wide. Uh, so the stat, it has washed out. Now it's 50-50. Now it's but for, for, oh my goodness, what a fortunate bounce that wasn't quite as fortunate as it looked but I, I don't think i've ever seen that shot actually happen i would have loved to see that go in that would have made a great highlight right there you're gonna see first of anything from uh, players in this league and, and across Echo Arena. It's gonna be from players like this. They're always trying to push the boundaries, find the new ways to hit, to defend, to do all of it. Uh, just ever evolving. It's iron sharpens iron here in Echo Arena and the competitive scene, uh, especially now in the Pro Series. So off it goes, and maybe the second goal indeed. The law takes it away. Five to zero. And that went in from 14 meters out. And uh, as I understand it, Chad can hear the in-game comms. Uh, so we can get that taken care of. That would be fantastic. I'm sure the players don't want the, their comms out there 
Montreal without their knowledge. Uh, so now it's going to be the, uh, excuse me, Montreal Freeze here with this Joust Advantage. Coming out here, cruising with it, sending out one far side to Zox. Zox sending out one in, looking for that uh, that relay. But it's off of the mark. Light is coming. It's going to get that one turned around and reset there to the law. So uh, the Dallas Knights back in possession here, sending us one out. Oh, no, turning it over there to Zucks in that tube. I've seen Zucks make so many plays at mid. Zucks is kind of like Jay Walker uh, in his mid-play style. As far Ninja, oh, gets the 1v1. Well, that one off of the post and will be picked up by Mozzie who turns it around. Well, even, even inside the goal, Zucks is one of those players. I, I knew him originally as a very good offensive player. As speaking of, there's Caesar just missing, however. Uh, but Zucks really over this last year, I want to say, maybe even year extended, really started impressing a lot with a defense oh and God. another glancing blow on the goal and <laughs> that said so did we both these teams trying to find their rhythm and it is in for cruising yeah, cruising's gonna get that one in from fire ninja uh as uh as that one goes in for uh, it's gonna be excuse me the montreal freezes first goal of this game uh and uh yeah so this is gonna be a uh a joust advantage here for the dallas knights coming out here uh Handled here by the law. We we'll get that one set across there too. Light has come. Light has come. Getting stunned out. Oh no, cruising off the backboard. Hits it. Gets that one in. Or the three. That's gonna tie the game here. Uh, just three minutes in. Sometimes that is all it takes. One to get you on the board and break the ice appropriately, of course. Uh, shout out Phenom in there as well in the chat, but. Breaking the ice and then, well, breaking some face with a sun steal and delivery. And that is a song in itself. All tied up and courtesy Cruisin. Yeah, that was a beautiful goal there from Cruisin off the backboard. Light has come and on this one here at mid in this, uh, this now tie game. Light, who is uh, probably one of the fastest up and comers in the league, has uh, the shot there from, uh, was that Mozzie behind the goal? does not connect on it. Now at the Valley here, all oh, the laws coming away with it. They have a chain way out. If they press up quick enough, no, it's not going to happen. Now they have cherry pickers, not anymore. They're going to turn around, cruising the Fire Ninjas. They're looking to pick this one up. Fire Ninja, oh, the shot goes high. That is unfortunate as Mozzie gets it recovered here for the Knights, clearing it out through the near side tube. Gets it by that defensive chain. Picks up here by Mozzie. Mozzie over to the law, the law. Ducking one. Don't go. Oh, 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 I don't believe he did that. The law, breaking the law. <laughs> oh, 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 riled up, didn't we? That is fantastic. The, first of all, the clear. Painting it off the corner there to evade the stack and set it up perfectly for that midfield pickup by Mozzie. Over to the law. Put on the moves. Put on the score. Take a lead. Take a drink of water. They deserve it. That was stellar. Stellar indeed. As Chrome can take a seat. Ender on the far side. And only this one. Juking around on the, the, uh, the Geo there. Going to send this one back to Cruzen. Yes, Chrome, I saw we said. Zuck sending this one into Ender. Ender shot off the post. That one's going to be picked up by Mozzie. We'll get this one cleared out. Still a two point lead here to the Knights. We're going to get this one down to the freeze bubble here. Oh, it's in the bubble. I see freeze in the zone. We'll be firing into with a pickup here under pressure by, there by the law. So that's in the hands of Light. Light sending this one across in the hands of Caesar. They've got three in the bubble. They had a numbers advantage, uh, but they were a little bit off of balance. So I, I can respect them uh, slowing it down here. And uh, now pulling it out to look for a more collected attack on the bubble as the law pressing in pulls that defender out goes up to the right side shoulder light gets a lane and gets the goal gets it in for two that is your first double goals in this game i'm pretty sure it's gonna put dallas up, dallas knights up by four and the montreal freeze there i think maybe a little miscommunication on the defense uh, at that juncture because they only had one pressing outside of the bubble despite there being a couple players out there and then the player inside the bubble by that shoulder was also uncovered. So some missed assignments defensively will result in the walk-in. Walk-in freezer, I guess. Uh-oh. Pass across here from Zox. It's not going to be on. Mozzie gets it picked up, sent out, but cruising. Always on the back line there. Two minutes to go in this first quarter. Four-point lead to the Dallas Knights. This cruising, slowing it down, sending it out. The bounce is not good. This is loose. Good recovery there by Ender. Ender's... Uh, Taking the chain on, gets stunned out. See this double chain here from the Dallas Knights? That's got a lot, not exclusively B Love, but that definitely is B Love style. As far as you bring it in, oh, the shot! Caesar gets the save, sends that one out, and that one will be uh, towards the near side trap. Zox has to take the law 1v1. No, it's gonna be cruising. I did not see cruising there. Cruising sending one up to Ender. Ender. Oh my goodness, pulls the end of there, jukes by another. Oh, good grab there, Mossy, but Ender gets it recovered, gets it in anyways. Yeah, that's gonna put the freeze back with it too. 
Oh man, any defenders going against Ender just says, end me, because it does not work. <laughs> you don't stop Ender, I told you, Dimwi. Even when you stop Ender, you don't stop him, because he gets it back, and then he Correct. drops it in. Nine to seven, wow. Shout out to SG Skeptic, as the law is going to handle this one. Oh, oh ducking uh, the attacking player, Ender, speak of the devil. They do have a numbers advantage here if they continue to press up, although Cruzen's going to... Oh, 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 light! I, I, why does he have the lane? You know what? I, know. I think I think Ender and Cruz and we're supposed to get back together and cover. Yeah, it's one of those situations where maybe I cast was cursed a little bit because again the the chemistry you'd figure would be there, but a couple of defensive misassignments here would have cost a couple of goals against the freeze. So something they certainly will want to tighten up. But uh, that's the beauty of this format is that you have plenty of time to do so, even though we're about thirty seconds away from a quick break uh, on the quarter. Indeed we are, as Cruzen sends this one in. They're looking for one more goal here to end the quarter. Send across Fire Ninja. Fire Ninja maybe looking for cut. No, takes on 1v3 and gets it in for the two. Montreal Freeze are going to end the round ostensibly uh, mm -hmm. 12 to 9. Of course, we have, uh, there's going to be about, what, three and a half seconds. Uh, with a quick enough stack, Palador, they could get there. I don't know. We'll have to see as we come out of the tubes here. I don't know, Fire Ninja is known for going pretty quick. Oh no, they're just gonna send that one to that far side too. That will end the round, 12 to nine in favor of the Knights. They take uh, the first quarter, still three quarters to go. With that, we have a word from our sponsors. We will be right back. One American with a burning desire to save the world from high prices. He is game here between the Knights and the Freeze. <laughs> the stats, I mean, the stats don't lie. This is a great game. Very even, very back and forth, which are phenomenal. Demi, Palador, what are we, where are we going? Well, the stats might lie a little bit in this case. A little case, bit. I, <laughs> well, oh, no. I see them uh, now. I, it. I was like, I, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> this is the lowest of low-hanging fruit. <laughs> you know, it's okay. We, we all have our casters jinxes. We just got to get those those shakes out here. It happens. Uh, so, Jeep Girl, uh, this it, is your intro it, to it, if nothing else. Okay, it wasn't on the screen when I said that. <laughs> uh, that's fair, fair. enough. But, but that said, that said, we are going to the second quarter now. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and with that, I... So far, I mean, uh, three different players for both teams uh, getting on the score sheet. No one uh, sticking out particularly over the other. I think it's just a feeling out process uh, for Montreal Freeze. All things considered, had they not had those uh, missed assignments on defense, they could be in the lead right now. So again, you, you tighten that thing up, uh, that, that defensive scheme up, and I think the second quarter can go a lot better for them. But shout out to the Dallas Knights because they executed and they punished. Oh, what a move there by Linus Cobb. He pulls the, uh, the Ender on, uh, uh, not on Ender, I believe it was on Fire Ninja, uh, who's then paired with Ender. The Law, oh, the Law, pulls out the ladder, brings that one in, excuse me, the staircase. Gets that one for the two to kick us off here in, in uh, round two, a quarter two, in fact. It gives this team a five-point lead to start the quarter. You really love your twos, didn't we? But me too. Two, 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 uh, two. <laughs> too true. Oh man, the law there. Another one of those players who are just tremendously talented and worked, uh, worked his way up from uh, the early days of VRML two years ago, just about to the date almost, uh, starting things out and working all the way to master season by season. A well seasoned player, suffice to say. Indeed, indeed, indubitably. It's Fire Ninja over to Zox here on the near side. Zox up to Ender. Ender wants to send them one across. Jukes around. That's, he didn't have a lane. He, at no point did he get a lane. Dallas Knight's defense was actually ex, had that had those lanes covered exceptionally well. Also, Dallas Knight's uh, excuse me, the freeze not have the the advantage there, the strategic advantage. Uh, so it really wasn't a, a great situation. Is oh what a play there by the law. I don't know how he gets away with it. He sends it out and uh, does get away with it as Mossy picks it up. Mossy mm -hmm. long shot. Mossy hits it. Forty meters out from half court. And that's gonna put the Dallas Knights up by eight. Mozzie Airborne from the mail slot. That is classic Mozzie in the sense that if it's a, it's not a game, 
with Mozzie in it if Mozzie isn't scoring constantly and, and really high degree of difficulty shots as well. I mean, five points on the board now, but that is just uh, the first five of probably going to end up with something like uh, 15 by the end of this. So well, we shall see. But that's a great hit, Dimwi. And that gets him going now, 17 to 9. That's Ender behind the Nicole. Ooh. Oh, got it in. I believe it. Uh, <laughs> it looked very, I, that, I'm not, that looked, so I just saw what happened on stream. It looked nothing like that to me uh, on my version. And I'm thinking Mozzie saw something completely different than any of us. Uh, so that, that was a proper, it was a proper goal. Mozzie was kind of there. I think there was a, some, some delay, but anyways, the law. It's gonna get this one picked up. Technical goals are goals, although that was a, a little bit more than a technical goal, technically. Oh, ow, Mozzie. Well, he gets it back. Gets that one hit for the three. Uh, yeah, just turns it around just, just like that. Converts on it. Also technically correct. Yeah, Mozzie able to uh, shut it in and this time leaving no doubt. Uh, they are still within striking distance for the freeze, but there is a lot, lot of offensive heat coming out. And unfortunately that defensive stack just overshot. This is gonna put them maybe at a numbers disadvantage in the goal. They're gonna go for it. And what a bold hit, but Ender can do it with the best of them. It is 14 on the board now, courtesy the backboard from Ender. I, I want to say something about that. Sh I don't, I, that was, I don't know how, that, I would never hit that. I, that was an anchor shot too. I mean, he anchored that. I don't know how, I don't know how that works out. I don't know how the anchor mechanic actually works. It's a little over my head, but that was an anchor shot as well. Oh no, turn over here. Cruiser gets it picked up, sending this one out. In the hands of Ender, is he going to do it again? They've got a 3v1 right now. He's going to set it up and Mozzie with the hands. Does not lose pace, sends this one all the way down into the freeze. Bubble, I see too many bodies coming in. Or blue, overshoots, light has come, opportunity, goes over to Mozzie, does not miss. They're up by eight. Wonderful pass by Light has come to find Mozzie. The communication was no doubt there because right as Light was turning around, well, they saw the light again for the pass and to their delight, didn't we? You gotta love that because anytime you can get those forward approaches on the goalie, one on one or otherwise, it just gives you every possible angle to finish uh, from. And as I said, Mozzie will do that oh, in no. every single game. And the law may oh, be no. just the same, but oh, 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 oh. no, it is out of there and back into the rebound by the wedge. I thought for sure, I thought for sure that was on its way in. Uh, but no, Ooh, Caesar gets that one broken up and will be recovered by Zux. Excuse me, Fire Ninja, sending it into the near side too. Loose still, Fire Ninja, he had it, got stunned out. Mozzie with it, has one cutting in, he's gonna go to that player that is light as come. Caesar on the near side, Caesar behind the goal now. Light has come though, gets stuffed by Zux. We'll send that one out to mid. Takes a few bounces there. Zux trying to recover. Oh, puts a shield up at Mozzie. Too wise for that. Sends this one up to Caesar here on the near side. They press in. They've got a big numbers advantage right now. If they press, not quick enough. Ender gets that one picked up and cleared out. Is that a shot? There is no way. There is no way. Oh, that goes wide. But it will get put in by Fire Ninja. Who's going to bring the freeze back within six here. But even that fling, that was just a couple of hair lengths away from being a near full quarter by Ender. But Fire Ninja, to their full credit, not giving up on the play. That is the spirit of it. Uh, you're always, always looking for those constant actions per minute, right? Keeping him up. So when that disc is cleared, until you see the goal light up with a score, you are always zooming. And zoom they did. Oh, oh, oh. The law somehow gets away with that. Ender behind the play, although uh, Fire Ninja brings it back into the play here. Ender going to press up to that, that four check cruise. And, oh, man, he he is some of the best reads. Gets this one sent out, although that bounce sends it right to mid. Fire Ninja open. Goal sends it in. Hits what? It. Goalie gets there, not able to make what? the save. Montreal freeze. We're back within three. Ooh, that surprised me. I thought they were there. That looked like a save, but almost got deceived by uh, the speed it was coming in. You almost expect it to be blowing by, and then instead, well, it does go by. Uh, just a lot slower than maybe expected, but yeah, not able to readjust in time. I mean, that they were talking about your quarter seconds that make the difference. It made the difference there. You know, Dewey Blank in the chat says, I believe in Dallas, they used to hold it off that ice. Actually, in fact, they're not used to holding off the ice. As light has come, sending us up to the law who gets it in. Please tell me somebody understood what I was saying with that. That was really funny. That was really funny. You all should be laughing so hard right now. Uh, I don't do like we, do we the ice, Dimwe. I. That's how you get frostbite. Very unsafe. But uh, that said, 24 to 19, and the Law able to finish another one there. The Law now with nine points, uh, second highest score in the game. 
Fire Ninja sending it across. They're, they're, they only have two in the zone here. So the other two do get in. They're going to have to reset there. Cruising, pressing up over to Fire Ninja. Zox on the shield. We go to Zox. He wants the points. He gets the points. Gets two in. They're going to be back within three here as uh, Zox gets his first goal of the game. And no more timely of a, of a time, well, than right now, right? Because it seemed like to start off the second quarter that the, the Knights were just going to keep on doing what they were doing, which is to say, uh, blitzing ahead. But as I say that, a nice series of plays in the last few minutes by the freeze and oh. maybe one coming in with some ease from the loss. So as I say that, they push ahead by a little more. But still, yet yeah, the Freeze have at least done a good job to turn what could have honestly been a blowout quarter situation into, into something much more digestible here. I'm going to have to go a little hard on uh, Fire Ninja for that one. He was in the lane. There's no excuse to miss that. Uh, maybe a little too hard, but, uh, you know, uh, we, we are professionals at this level. We are the best. These are the best players in the world. Fire Ninja has no excuse to miss that save. As, oh, what a read there harsh. by Caesar getting it set out. It is harsh, but he was there. Oh, my. To end the round, Zux gets his second of the game. Actually, in fact, to end the half. Dallas Knights are going to be up by four, but that's only after that one there at the very end there from the freeze. And with that, we have a quick word from our sponsors. We will be right back. The Napa Charity Cup Alan event you don't want to miss will be March 18th through the 20th in St. Louis, Missouri. Bush Stadium is hosting the Napa Charity Cup, supporting Special Olympics. So come on out to the Redbird Club for the LAN event that will put the faces to the names that you interact with in the community and help support a great cause. Go over to NapaVRPro.com for more information. You guys, we are back. This is another fantastic match. There is no doubt these are indeed the best players Ever. I mean, anywhere. I mean, these guys are incredible. This game has been back and forth. It, to see everybody's name up there for scoring and for goals, this is phenomenal. Just to have a four point game here going into the second half is breathtaking. And I am thrilled to see this outcome. The rosters are great. This is phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. We are heading now into a interview with. Kung, I was able to catch up with him this week and chat with him for a few moments. So let's see what he had to say. You are well, the honestly, captain we're, of the National you know, Legends. It started way back. Yep, yep. It's it's an honor, honestly. It's it's great. Uh the team's great. We all really good friends with each other already. Great chemistry. Uh I'm really looking forward to the season. So you are one of the few players who have a move named after you in Echo Arena. How did that come about? <laughs> Uh, really that was like a few years ago you know back when i was on uh the cv1 still actually so back in like probably like 2019 i just used to hit, shoot that shot a lot when i was playing pubs and then uh people ended up just calling it the kung shot tell me about the name kung where did it come from what's the what's the story behind it honestly i was a little kid you know probably made a minecraft or roblox account and i named it kung fu 8 um probably after watching kung fu panda or something don't really remember and then i just shortened it to kung okay so tell me about draft night how was it being being pulled for the nashville legends it was it was great um motherboard was very welcoming to all of the team not just me uh we were all felt very welcome it was a great experience for sure uh very unique thing for echo as well it's great to see that it's growing just like this uh, I'm really, really just looking forward to all the competitive games that are going to happen. I know all the teams are super balanced. We've been doing scrims and very close games. I, I just can't wait to see those competitive matches and uh, watch some competitive Echo Arena again for sure in a few weeks. I think I'm looking forward to going up against all of my uh, my old teammates, Game, Ryan, Jay. Uh, I think those are all going to be really great games. Yeah, uh, me and Dash are... Both dashes on the National Legends with me, uh, and then Brox and Ryan are together as well. But 
the rest of us are all spread out. Honestly, I say it every time, just keep practicing. Like, it, it'll come. Uh, t this game has a huge learning curve, but once you keep practicing, keep shooting around, you'll get the hang of it. You'll get your shot down to exactly where you need it to be. Uh, and just always keep a positive head. Don't try to get down on you yourself or your teammates. If you miss, you miss. It happens. Uh, just keep playing the game for fun. Pleasant to speak with, and I'm looking forward to seeing him play later in the week. In fact, Saturday. So, okay, let's look at our stats. They are correct now. <laughs> <laughs> I have been redeemed. And the stats don't lie. <laughs> stats do not lie this time. They do not. Uh, I, I kind of want to point out, not to interrupt you, Pally, but I'm uh, looking at the, the team team level stats. Possession time within one second, 425 to 426. Shots taken, 16 to 18. Assist, 9 to 7. How even is this game? I mean, really, it, it even shows on the scoreboard a four-point difference. That's only two goals. That, that's literally 30 seconds. Well, it's like 40, but you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> well, and credit to Zucks, too, because at last minute, those two goals, and especially the one yeah. the, right about the buzzer, basically, uh, that, that that is such a huge momentum boost. Now, the unfortunate part, I suppose, uh, for the freeze is the potential being frozen out a little bit because of the halftime just disrupting that flow. But even so, they again, they turned what was looking initially like it could be a runaway quarter. They turned it into something really palpable, and that is courtesy, uh, especially of those late Zucks goals. Yes, yeah, I, I, uh, I completely agree. There's, the, and, and what was, what was interesting is that that's another one of those, uh, those situations where you have a player who wasn't doing a whole lot on offense, but when he did, those were really important goals to end that quarter, to end the half with those goals. You know, despite the, we, we talk a lot about the differences between how, how the Nepa Pro Series runs and how VRML runs and the rounds versus quarters, you know, short form versus long form, point resets versus points carrying over. And and in this situation, I, I you know, it, it doesn't, not, none of that really matters when it comes to carrying the momentum at the end of a round, at the end of a quarter. As uh, Carrying that momentum is so important, although Mozzie with an opportunity goes beyond the goal to the law of the stop. And that's why. That's why they get this one sent out. They're going to chant after it. I see a whole bunch of bodies coming down. There's a leech. There's a blue body. Oh, the play there to scoop it out. But off, cru excuse me, cruising, not Oculizator, cruising with this one on the near side is going to bring this one in. Looking for an option. What a stop there. Let us come. Gets this one sent back out to mid. They're going to chain after it again opportunity here Monty all the day off the post what a start to this half oh you hate to see that not able to reward that excellent defense from the knights with offense at the other end so they do lose the disc and they lose it again as it will be the freeze with a takeover enter with that recovery Oh, phenomenal action to start off absolutely i take back everything i said these guys are still well warmed up Indeed, is Ender sending out one behind the goal to fire Ninja, who will get it in for the two. And that is a minute seven. That is, is that the first goal of this round? It is. That's going to put the freeze up. Excuse me, not up, but they are back within two here. We are still in a very even game. Absolutely. And everyone, uh, as we mentioned, just contributing uh, to the this effort here. Four players, all four players with uh, more than one goal on uh, the side of the freeze. I mean, Ender, Zucks, Fire, and Cruz in 7, 4, 9, and 5, respectively, in the points department. Everyone able to get their hands a little bit dirty here uh, to get these scores. Caesar sending us from back across. Light has come. Light has come juking around on the ceiling there. He's going to send that one over to the law, the law. Gets it in, gets the 1v1. Yeah, basically got the 1v1. Uh, I was looking at it from my angle. Looked like he was heavily covered, uh, but in fact, got that lane, gets that one in. It's going to push uh, his team, the Dallas Knights, back up by four here. Still a lot of time left. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Law now with the first goal of this quarter. Uh, the lead score across both teams thus far 14 points, as well as four assists, uh -oh. which is also uh -oh. the lead uh -oh. assist. So we gotta hand things uh hand it to to the law because not content with just the offense also wants to get others involved. Wow. I don't know how they come away with that. There was a big a big mess up there and they get the points. They get the points. The law so the law forces a turnover as he's moving through. His own teammates knock it out of his hand on that chain. They were just in transition. Totally incidental. 
uh, and then they somehow get it. There's a scoop. There was a scoop to get it back to the law. The law is somehow able to get it to the light has come off balance, and Light's able to get that one in on the 1v1. That was a phenomenal play there from the Dallas Knights. Off balance the whole way through, they still get the goal. I, 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 I don't even, this is, when we talk about that's why, they're the best players in the world. Even when they're not doing, you know, when things aren't going right, they're still getting points. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when teams get in a nice, nice flow also, you know, it seems like the low percentage stuff, the unlikely, or the 50-50s even, it's, it just turns into 80-20s maybe in favor of a team. So something to watch out here uh, as Cruzen tries to take it in. They're looking to regain their flow, oh. and that is the way to do it. Way to go, Cruzen to Ender. And there is that explosive pair uh, from VRML now into Nepa Pro Series, showing some seriously nice play. See, now Stream is wondering uh, where did Ender come from? Because uh, he kind of came out of out from from outside the frame on the stream. But I'm telling you, I had full vision on everything going on there. I have no idea where Ender came from, and I could see him. See, yeah, I, 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 that was just a phenomenal play, a phenomenal setup. Ender sneaking that one in. This light has come, handling this one on the ceiling there. Far side sending it to Caesar. Has one behind the goal, goes to Mozzie. Stunt out, nice read there by Zox. As that one's gonna be picked up by Caesar. Oh, the Jukes. And off of the post, Mozzie, another opportunity. This time off of the head, and that was uh, Cruzen's head. But Caesar will finally get that one in. Fourth, fifth, sixth time is the charm. And that's a six point lead to the Dallas Knights. And it is so tough to not get panicked in that situation, but you saw that everyone, minus one player, looked like everyone, seven players just folding right into the goal, basically, uh, off of that loose disc. And that it tends to happen sometimes to the best of them, and so does that. Oh, no, but the shot Whoa. is missed. So the punish isn't there, but they'll still have another chance and placing it right in that top uh, corner. It's the law again, up to 16 points, uh, just in his own right. 35 on the hole, though as uh, they will pull ahead a bit again. It is so important to capitalize on those moments. When the other team screws up like that, you have to score. It's not just because they gave you three points, although that's 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 part of it. That's the that's the reason you have no excuse. You have no excuse to not score in that situation because they gave you three points. It was shot there for firing and drop of the post. Uh, but the reason the the reason you have to. So there's the no excuse, but also the reason you have to because it is demoralizing. It will absolutely destroy the head game of the other team. It will put them in a place where they lose their confidence and. And the law is going to get another one in. The Dallas Knights, for the first time in this game, have a two-digit lead up by 11. Yeah, absolutely. The law with 19 of them, though, thus far, putting in about half of the points. Exactly, in fact, if math checks out. And the five assists is still lead the way. So the law is really popping off here, but you're absolutely right, didn't we? I think a lot of this, too, it just predicated off the, one, the very confident mentals of uh, the free, or sorry, of the Knights right now, but also the uh -oh. kind of out of sorts uh, rut that they find themselves in for the free is just turning it over now left and right and not going their way. Oh, and everybody ever shooting that one. Uh, it was it, it broke the stop. Cruz and was trying to get that one over to Zox. He just hit the Geo right by him. I know the pain. Those Zox opportunity sending him at a cross fire ninja overshooting just a little bit. Although that one, how fast fire ninja was moving, that was a hard one to judge. Although Ender gets this one broken up. Ender trying to get there. Mozzie. The, uh, that was a lack of communication there on the freeze. No way. Oh, that goes just wide. That would have been unbelievable. Mozzie gets it back. Gets it in. That's two more points on the board and a 13 point lead to the Knights. Ooh. Man, you know, the, the thing about this quarter, and the same applied to the f uh, the first and the second quarter especially, I feel like the Freeze, despite all of this, despite this avalanche that they're experiencing right now, they are not too far gone yet to come back. But the problem is, as we get deeper into this game, they can't be affording to continue playing from behind like this, where they're always playing a little bit of catch-up, not as we finish out this quarter, and they needed that. Desperately to just close off and cauterize the wound so that they can prepare for a much more successful finish because otherwise it's going to be very tough in these uh, last well nine minutes extending to the fourth quarter about to start because first off no, flare no not gg uh second off c savages great point dallas think, knights have think, 40 points Power i think Lord. they're referencing my uh, my 40 they are in the last they game, are so and now we'll we see. get to they test it We'll get to test it, absolutely. And oh, maybe oh, battle oh. tested is Mozzie. And Mozzie now up to, speaking of things I've said before, 15 points. Although, still another quarter to expend yet. Wow. Seriously, Mozzie and the Law are both really popping off in this one. Uh, 15 and 19 points. 
uh, respectively. As, uh, yeah, we're going to have 17 seconds on the board here uh, in this third quarter. A 14-point lead to the Dallas Knights as Montreal Free is looking to get one to end the end the quarter here. Oh, set up. They get it through. Fire Ninja goes wide. Maybe another second second chance here. Fire Ninja. Oh, that one dings. You know the third one? If you follow the trend, the third one goes in. He went wide. He dinged. And then uh, doesn't get the third opportunity here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> there it is, though. It missed, but there it was. Oh, 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 man. Oh, that kills me. All right, with that said we're gonna go to a quick word from our sponsors we'll be right back he is the stuntman that saved the world a man that brought the world together because of his love for honda one man with four wheels strapped to a parallel twin engine the stuntman that saved the world get your favorite honda motorcycles atvs and side by sides today at Holzhauer Pro Motorsports in Nashville, Illinois. Friday nights at 1030 Eastern. Head over to NepaVRPro.com slash late night for late night with Ivan Thrive. You never know what or who you might see when Ivan sits down with your favorite Echo Arena players and teams. Head over to NepaVRPro.com slash late night Friday nights at 1030 p.m. Eastern to catch late night with Ivan Thrive. And we are coming back in for this fourth and final quarter of this match between the Dallas Knights and the Montreal Freeze. We're taking a look at the stats here right before they begin. And Sir Dimwi, Palador, where are we going here? There's still plenty of time. We've got people in chat talking about the game's over and good games. No, we know that's a no-no. <laughs> lots, lots of play time left. So let's go. Absolutely. We're going. Uh, eight minutes to spare here, and this is going to be gut check time. Certainly as oh. there it is. They needed that save as well, so starting it off with a good defensive play. That can spark a nice scoring run on the opposite end, so we'll see if this can turn into some good news as we go into the latter parts of this game. Now uh, send in here. Oh, uncontested. Ender will plant. will place that one in for the two to tie his teammate Fire Ninja for 11 points in the game. And uh, Ender, uh, you know, considering, uh, you know, his, his, his reputation, his history, you know, uh, the law with 19, Mozzie with 15, I would expect Ender uh, to be right up there with him. He's a little bit behind, so I expect Ender to go out to pop off a little bit in this fourth quarter. I probably just cursed it as a law. Sending this one up is going to be, oh, what a what a send up there to Mozzie. Mozzie across to Caesar. Caesar has a 1v1 against the goalie right now. Now that Chang comes in, he's looking for one cutting. Goal is open. Oh, my goodness. You can't do that. I can see what happened. I can see what happened. Mozzie was coming in. He was cutting. Goalie challenges a cut. It's a bad read. It leaves a goal wide open. That is unfortunate there. That's going to put the, uh, excuse me, the Dallas Knights up by 14. Saving grace there, I guess the silver lining, if there can be a takeaway, is the fact that it was a two. It was a two, so they didn't get the maximum amount of points out of it, but still yet. Just another one of those slight miscommunications, perhaps, or just, or misplays, as the, as the case may be. You know, trying to press those advantages and knowing when to dive and when to stick. It's it's a tough balance, Dimwi. It's a tough balance, and that <laughs> shot was open for the taking as well, as they'll wind around for a rebound, but Caesar uh, snags it, sends it. Yeah, this it's it's at this point of the game. You can't you can't you can't be missing those generally. Uh, but when when you know when you're down by 14 points, you still got a whole you know you're in the you're in the fourth quarter. You gotta be hitting those. You have to be punishing. Your teammate just stunned out their their defensive stack. They left the goal wide open for you. Oh, nice, nice play there. Nice read. Ender gets that one sent away. They've got two stacks looking to get away. They get one stack away. Oh, over shooting there. That was Ender and Fire Ninja. Uh, no surprise or that quick as a Caesar picks that one up, sends it out. That one's gonna be into the bubble and the chain once again over shooting, but this time cruising. We'll recover that one there less than uh, six minutes to go here in the fourth quarter as cruising walks this one up on the near side sending it up does get it cleared out and through into the hands of ender long shot oh off the post recovery there zucks gets it for the two and uh, that'll bring the Montreal freeze back within 12 but they got to score a lot quicker if they want to if they want to come back yeah this is going to what i was bringing up uh, towards the end of the third round where Nice job to stick with it and, and get the score, but they cannot afford to be trading goals, especially with five and a half left. So uh, they did the right thing there in getting that score, but now it needs to be some defense and some more punishes. No more goal trading from this juncture on or else uh, that could spell doom for them. 
Yeah, they will, they will, they will very quickly run out of time because you, you also got to remember that every time that you need another goal, that's 20 seconds. You have to wait for a full reset after you score. So that takes even more time off the clock than just a goal. Oh, the setup there. Mozzie over to Caesar. Caesar's going to plant that one. I don't know why Mozzie doesn't get the credit for it. Must have been off of somebody. I think it was a kind of in and out and in and out. So that's why uh, no, uh, no assist there. But that's going to push the team back up by 14. And you said it, Palador, they can't be trading goals like this. Uh, the Montreal Freeze, if they want to get this comeback with four and a half to go, down by 14 points, they, they have to start scoring and they have, to, they have to prevent the Dallas Knights from getting anything in for the rest of the game here. Yeah, absolutely, because it's almost deceptive in the fourth quarter especially. Uh, it's not the same as the end of the first, second, and third, where four minutes is four minutes. Not really the case, uh, because you can expect, as a nice little move there, snazzy from the law, uh, you can expect as we get into the final few minutes, if a team has a solid lead, uh, there's going to be a point where, unlike the prior rounds, they're going to be content ending the game kind of uh, slow and steady, uh, dragging up the clock a little bit. That is, clock management is such, such a big part of sports uh, and echo as much as anything else. It absolutely is. I mean, it's, it's absolutely vital. You got to be aware of uh, what when the point of no return is and no low <laughs> I, you know, I, there's there's nothing to even interpret from that. <laughs> He's just, that's just, uh, he was in the right place at the right time. He knew he could make it, so he sends it in, gets the three. They're back within 13. Is that enough? Pro I, I don't know, but... Uh, I, it, it, <laughs> so that's that's one of the so shots angry. you take when you're very ahead or very behind. I, I still feel like three and a half minutes, they're within reach. I mean, look, another three here, for instance, would make this a very interesting game. But that said, another score here will just make it a very oh, tough comeback. Yeah. Mozzie's going to get it done. And Mozzie absolutely lighting it up tonight. Minimum of five goals required here. That's a, uh, that's a point in a return of 120. So they have a minute 40. They have a minute 40, actually less than a minute 40, minute 35 to score five threes. Uh, if you hit twos, you have even less time than that. Uh, so Montreal Free is handling this one ender with it. Sends that one out. They've got three deep here. It is going to immediately turn over. They were going for, I don't know, you can't go for those deep passes against a beloved defense. You just can't do it. Uh, they, they run the double chain. They're going to be running a double chain. That's that's his strength. That's what he brings to the team. Zoxo is going to get that one in for the two. Brings him back with 13. Uh, but the two and a half on the clock. I, I just don't know if there's enough time left. It's going to come down to that clock management at this point, and I, although you could expect, of course, uh, you know, the open, open shots, if they're given, they'll still take them, but I, I would feel like for the Knights, they're going to be content to, with this lead in, in the sense that they know they don't have to rush at this point. They're just going to take what the defense gives them, and more so, they're going to force, well, there you go, they're going to force the defense out of goal because they, they can't be camping at this point. They just need to cause quick turnovers, and that does mean open goals. Yep. Yeah. And uh, open goals, especially from uh, being so aggressive. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think I just reiterated your point. 16 <laughs> point lead here to the Dallas Knights uh, with. Uh, yeah, we're, we're basically they have 20 seconds to score five goals. That's uh, physically impossible. Uh, so, yeah, B-Love sending us one out. That one's going to be off of the ceiling and down into the bubble here. Uh, one more goal. Should I sit? Oh, stunned out. Not going to happen there. That one's going to get sent away. Uh, into the hands of Zox here. Zox, long shot. No, he's just looking for a dump in. Takes a careening bounce to the far side there. Or will be collected by the law for the Dallas Knights. The law having a phenomenal game. Uh, having 21 points on the board. If Mozzie gets another one, Mozzie will take over for highest points in the game. Uh, but right now it is the law with 21. Mozzie with 20. As uh, that one's going to be turning around, cruising, sending it through. He's just over a minute to go here. And uh, this game comfortably in the hands of the Dallas Knights as Ender will hit another long three there. Uh, brings his team back within 13 points, but with only a minute to go, too little, too late. And final minute now, so just playing to make that differential a little bit closer. I, I think, and we'll get to it, of course, in post game a, a bit before our next match. But I, I, do, I do think we're uh, for the freeze, they were just a small adjustments away uh, from being okay in this in this game but it was just those minor those minor uh i, I don't know what we want to call it maybe just kind of the feeling out you know the team uh, and the chemistry and getting that aligned because those miscommunications ultimately are what kept them in those those holes right those uh, occasional miss uh, those missed passes those uh, stacks that overshot the times that they left the goal open a few too many it's those things that made a difference 
It, it, it really is. Uh, it, it really, well, that and uh, I'm also going to point out uh, missing open threes. We saw quite a few th open threes get missed in this one uh, by some notable names. Uh, although after that last goal there, uh, Ender with 20 points in the game, despite uh, this 10 point uh, goal differential here uh, as a B love, B love yeah, it gets activated. He has not been in the game this whole hey. time. There he is. He's going to get the last goal there. Uh, that's going to win his team there up uh, 12 points, 56 to 44 uh, to end this game uh, in the fourth quarter. And uh, yeah, what a, uh, what a matchup there uh, between these two teams, but wow, Dallas Knights just coming out dominating. Well, not dominating, but really swinging in that one. Yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, I don't know. I, not, I, I can't speak for the whole season, didn't we, of course, but uh, I, I don't expect necessarily a ton of borderline 60 point games from teams. We'll see. It'll happen, I'm sure, but it's, one of, it's a very high mark to hit anytime you get into those 50s and 60s. And uh, they just, er, collectively, everyone really popped off. Yeah, they, they did they... pop off. Go ahead. I was just going to say, they did pop off, but there is bound to be one person who stood out. And you guys <laughs> know what time it is. It's time for the dominant turkey. So, what are you thinking? Uh, for me, I, I'm going to say the law. Uh, it, mainly because... Um, Mozzie started out uh, not able to get you know the shots initially, but the law I would say it kind of helped with that first initial burst, that first scoring run, which then allowed Mozzie to come in in the last uh, the latter few quarters and then pop off. But really being able to start off on the strong foot, the right foot, uh, really kind of set that tone for the rest of the, 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 the 32 minutes of play, basically from the beginning. So I, I don't disagree with what you said. Uh, but I do disagree with your conclusion. Uh, well, no, I don't disagree with your conclusion. I, well, I disagree with your ultimate conclusion uh, that the, the law gets to the, uh, the dominant turkey. I'm going to have to disagree. Uh, one, although the law for himself had a, an amazing game, a phenomenal game that was really a standout performance from him. But Mozzie has proven to me to be one of the most reliable players in this game. He has a good game every game. And in this one, 20 points, only one behind the law. Also five saves, five saves saves on the board uh, i'm gonna have to give it to mozzie mozzie yeah the, the the captain here of the dallas knights uh just just setting a standard uh for this team not just on offense but on both sides of the arena uh playing in the bubble and uh playing in in the bubble playing in the bu bu bubbles uh in fact the orange and the blue i'm gonna have to go with uh mozzie in this one just just a stellar performance from mozzie although as far as like if you were to compare their typical performance the law had a better game compared to his typical performance. The Mozzie just, I mean, just overall, uh, I think really, really uh, carried, carried a lot of the weight of that one. Not, obviously not all of it, not nearly all of it, but a lot of it for sure. It's like I said at the beginning, didn't we? I mean, for Mozzie, even though uh, an initial slow start and really just the first quarter, I mentioned uh, you can rely on any game Mozzie's in, Mozzie is going to pop off pretty much guaranteed. Yeah. So uh, your answer, not wrong either. Not wrong either. The, the Twitch chat gave him a new nickname tonight and it is now the monster because he is a monster that is so late <laughs> i had that in my head i did i wasn't gonna i did I, there was no point where i mean there was plenty of point i thought but i had that thought that popped into my head the monster i didn't see it that is hilarious that it came up organically elsewhere i love it that is uh, that is phenomenal nickname for mozzie i completely agree he is a beast I actually almost went fantastic. to the uh, uh, the Mazda making copies. Anyways, old reference. <laughs> I'm going to go hold the freeze. Was that the phrase, Dibley? Something like that? Oh. Go hold the ice. I don't know. Whatever reference you made that I didn't get like three quarters ago. <laughs> <laughs> that thing. No, that was about Texas isn't used to cold weather. That was the joke. I'm saying they're, they're used oh. to holding off the freeze. No, they're not. When they get freeze, they shut down. Anyways. <laughs> All right, well, you guys, we have one more amazing NEPA Pro Series match for you tonight. At the top of the hour, it is going to be the New York Kings as they take on the Orlando Cyclones. And that is going to be a match to catch for sure. So please stand by, grab another drink, get some more popcorn or goobers or raisinets or whatever it is you like to eat and be back here in 11 short minutes and we will see you for more nepa pro series right here on nepa tv
And welcome back. This game is going to be incredible. New York Kings as they're going up against the Orlando Cyclones. This is gameplay at its best right here. I am so excited for this game. It's been building all day. Again, these are the best of the best. And I, I have nothing to say other than I'm in amazement. Shock and all. It's been a great, uh, great first night, uh, Dimwi, of of matches. This is our third of three here in the NEPA Pro Series. Of course, we've seen uh, here on NEPA TV uh, plenty of these exhibition matches featuring the Pro Series teams as well as AAA teams in recent weeks. But this is this is where uh, we were all building up to and the stakes now, as these teams know every game is going to count in the context of their season. And uh, we're going to end in, in a great way uh, tonight with uh, some very as always, tremendous teams at play. Yeah, this is a, a, a little bit of an intrigue game, of course, of the New York Kings, mm -hmm. uh, lead, led by Strem, the number one overall draft pick uh, in the NEPA Pro Series, a notable pickup there. And uh, he's playing alongside, of course, Al, Jiggy, Heck. And, well, it was that Green Pigeon, uh, but it appears he has changed his name now to Arch or Ark. That is going to drive me crazy. Somebody is going to have to tell me which way to pronounce that? Because uh, we don't have any history to go off of. Because uh, this is a recent name change. But this is an exceptionally talented team. Uh, of course, uh, notable, their captain, Strem, going first overall. Which was uh, both a surprise and not a surprise. Uh, considering probably one of the most well well, I would say actually the most well-rounded player in the world uh, would be my argument. Yeah, and Strembitsky, just a player who knows how to get it done. Every season that he's played in, whether in VRL, VRML, and now NEPA Pro Series, as well as the uh, numerous community leagues uh, and, and events and uh, weekend tournaments, what have you, wherever Strem is, Strem finds success. So the first pick, captain of the team, uh, recent champion in VRML as of uh, on the New York Kings to end season four just a month ago. Uh, and just a phenomenal player. But for the opposite side, too, of course, goes without saying, you got game here on this team for Orlando Cyclones. And for as much as uh, we can talk about the skill of Strembitsky, well-deserved, I mean, game, talk about someone on top of things, on top of the game. Uh, that is a name that everybody knows. And if you're on the opposite team, no one likes to see because he is a tough, tough matchup. Yes, uh, yes, he is. And, uh, you know, I, I say Strem is the most well-rounded player in the world. Uh, game is the best player in the world. And I, 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 you know, I used to say, yeah, probably best player, if not the best player, probably he is the best player in the world. There's no doubt about it. So we are watching the best players in the world, plural. <laughs> uh, but now you get the opportunity to see the number one round draft pick, who also happens to be the most well-rounded player in the world going up head-to-head -head <laughs> yeah. against the best player in the world. Also, with one of the most entertaining pairs you will ever get to see live, Rosie Ope and Saluna. Uh, Rosie Ope, a phenomenal, one of the best defenders you're going to find in the game. Saluna, historically one of the best shots in the game. And they're here with uh, Acorn and Captain Will, uh, two phenomenally talented players. Of course, you have to be phenomenally talented to even get into the Nepa Pro Series. Uh, but very, uh, very, uh, very, very interested in this matchup and we have just gotten note that uh we will be swapping servers here right before we go live so uh unfortunately a little uh delay uh but shouldn't take too long as it looks like they're moving rather quickly uh with that but uh yeah i i expect uh, quite quite the game here i i don't i expect this to be just highlight after highlight after highlight well, absolutely uh, and you know the orlando cyclones uh, this team, I uh, the, on the Denver Raptors, my team, just faced them about, what, two weeks ago or so on one of those aforementioned exhibition matches that were casted here uh, by, I believe, you and uh, Nails, as well as Jeep, uh, Jeep Girls. And that was uh, quite the fun match as well. That was my first stream, uh, first casted game as a player in about two and a half years. And uh, although we did uh, lose, it was a supremely competitive match. I mean, it was so fun seeing those players Again, in the first person, instead of just talking from the uh, the kind of the god voice on the caster's desk, you know, just being on the actual level and getting to feel that that physicality, the emotion, and getting back into the game, uh, always a thrill for sure. And you know, if, if they uh, give the New York Kings what they showed us just a couple of weeks ago on stream, I mean, uh, I'm I'm thinking we're gonna see uh, ourselves a heck of a game to end things off here on the stream. Now we know that. 
the Ro Rosie and Saluna have been playing together for a long time, as as Rosie told me the other night in her interview. Do those solid relationships that have become true friendships, how much does that really weigh into a game like this versus just straight up skill? I, I certainly have opinions about that, but I I I I I'd, I'd, uh, I'd defer to Paladar on that one, being his a little bit more uh, a little bit more uh, 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 experience in that department, I think. I even have some recent. Uh, I'll get to that, in a, I guess, in a second here. But tremendously. I mean, thing is, the emotional part of the game, the uh, the mentals, the emotions, that is an unavoidable part of any sports, and especially the more physical they are, the more emotional you get because you're working hard. You're in a battle. You you've got to you got to work well and like the people you're playing with. Uh, you got to have that chemistry. And in terms of recent recent uh, news, I suppose, I actually just played a kind of throwback scrimmage just a few days ago uh, amongst a group of uh, you know, three, four-year veterans of Echo Arena. Uh, I managed to drag in Simeon, my old teammate from ESL, two and a half years ago. We, we managed to get him into a game. And even though it has been a very long time since we've played, uh, the chemistry was still there. It felt so good. It was like we never stopped playing together. The passes were crisp. Uh, the positioning was right right there. We spent like half an hour talking after the match and just having a good time and reminiscing and stuff like that. Uh, it's important stuff. It's easy to get caught in the moments, uh, the moment-to-moment -moment things that we're doing here in the league, but, I mean, those relationships, man, they they, they last, and they are really important in terms of pushing your teams to the, the next levels. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting breaking news, didn't we? I will let you express this to the screen. I did not expect to get that update. I was, it's funny though. I was literally just looking this up to make sure I was getting it right because uh, there's a, there's an old metal band called Arch Enemy, but there was a long-standing fight if it was Arch Enemy or Arch Enemy, and uh, we did just get uh, an official word from the booth. It is pronounced Arch Arch Dash A R C H Dash. And uh, someone in chat uh, not too long ago asked, did he say Arch? And uh, yes, yes, he did. Uh, he is, uh, that is uh, that green pigeon playing uh, under a new alias here uh, in this matchup. So uh, we appreciate that. <laughs> that, that was the last thing I expected to hear uh, from the focus there, I'll be honest. <laughs> that really caught me off guard. The, the dash is an important part of it. <laughs> there are many a talented dashes at the high level. I, there's a lot of talk and chat about Archer taking that. I have no idea, guys. I, I don't. I don't know. I, we don't have access to the whole uh, Echo Arena player name, you know, name uh, database. And of course, uh, you know, what I mean, we're certainly not uh, uh, the ca captains or owners of these teams. Uh, so, okay, I, I'm pretty sure. I mean, as I understand it, that is that Green Pigeon. Unless someone is going to tell me that somebody knew uh, that we no. were not uh, informed of. I wanted to name myself Palador Dash, but it was taken, so I had to settle for just Palador. <laughs> you know, I was going to, before uh, before I became Sir Dimly, I was going to be Sir Dimly Dash. I, I was going to replace the T that was never in my name. Uh, I said mm -hmm. I just took it out, but of course it was never uh -huh. there, so I, there was nothing to take out. <laughs> okay, right. so Phantom just updated and said, AAA captains are the subs for the pro teams, and that is not green. Okay, so that is, in fact, a, a substitute here, Arch. So Arch is in the game uh, for that Green Pigeon. Thank you for the uh, the update there. Uh, that is uh, information that would be good to know before we, you know, <laughs> before we're live. Uh, but knowing it now, that's phenomenal. Thank you, Phenom, for for letting us know. Of course, uh, every you know, every this is we're all still kind of. Uh, Figuring things out as we go, not figuring things out. Of course, there's a, a very solid uh, foundation underneath us, but there's certain things. Uh, there's a, you know that an avenue for information like that. Uh, uh, you know the kind of thing that uh, that works up uh, with iteration and time. And uh, mm -hmm. as Phenom says, very new update just got added like yesterday. Uh, well, okay. Phenom, that was yesterday. We're in today, man. Come on, speak for yourself. I'm in tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know the Aussies are in tomorrow, so <laughs> fair enough. No, 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 no. Yesterday's tomorrow, today, or something like that. No, no, you're, re you're, you're remembering uh, 10 hours ago tomorrow. That's what you're remembering. We're confusing a whole lot of people right now, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> no, I do know for sure. <laughs> All right, time, mathematics, things like that. I do believe we're about to start our first round, our first quarter, that is, uh, in our final match of the debut day of NEPA Pro Series. Let's go. Yeah, the marquee matchup here. You've got New York Kings on the left and Orange Trimbisky, Arch, Jiggy, Heck, and Al. 
And Orlando Cyclones on the right in blue. Game, Saluna Rosio, Captain Will, eight corner. We are started here. Game gets that first touch and immediately stunned up by Stratton. I was going to get that one picked up. Look at the center through mid. Does bounce that one off the ceiling. Gets this one dumped all the way down. They have an orange chain in the area of the blue. No, it doesn't get there first. A scoop there from Jiggy. Sends that one incidentally out of the bubble, but it will be collected there on the far side. And a reset back to the back line there to Shrembitsky, who's looking to send this one back across. Now maybe a send in. You've got one high left, one low right. Option low right. Sends in the shot off the inside of the post. Bounces out of the bubble. A scoop there from Arch. will keep it in play. And a shot there with a save by Saluma. Gets that one set away. Oh, wow. I thought that was a goal guaranteed. Absolutely not. But that said, the three, it's open. And wow. will it be made off the bounce? No. I was tremendously entertained because for about 15 solid seconds, I feel like, Trem and Game had collided and they were just in a tickle fight trying to disable each other's stacks while everyone else was in the bubble uh, trying to make some moves. But hey, scoreless yet. A minute in. Scoreless yet. Trembitsky going for a wall shot. Otherwise known as a Kung shop. Again, Kung's teammate is going to get that one picked up. This one's sent out. will be picked up by Heck. Heck turns it right back around. A little ping pong at the moment. As this one gets cleared all the way back down. And again, the chains. We saw this in the first game. A lot of, uh, you know, inten intentions to clear and boost. But the other team was winning all the races, uh, you know, from on both sides. And so I'm curious if we're going to see the same thing here. Although Saluna is going to get this one set up to Acorn. Acorn open goal. Where is the defense? They left those two players down there completely uncontested. I think there were some stuns at mid. And our first goal of the game is a minute and a half in. Three points on the board to the Orlando Cyclones. Yeah, and Acorn getting it done here uh, for those first two points. And Saluna the assist on that. But yeah, I mean, top level play, top level action means pressing the advantages as much as you can. You're seeing more and more of these double stack defenses these days, but it is a double-edged sword on top of it because it can concede some open goals if you're not careful. And as we say oh. that, there's one just as the defense tried to recover, but Strambitsky leaving no choice but to accept the three-point fate. Yeah, and uh, goalie not stunned out there, but there, uh, she was perturbed. As, uh, I need a better word for that. <laughs> <It's perturbed. laughs> uh, bothered, uh, uh, you know, uh, di distracted. A little bit uh, as that chain came in, but now we'll be game handling this one once again on the uh, the Joust advantage, sending it up. Has a chain there. Uh, Rosie instead going to send this one near side to Acor. Acor stunned up by that chain. Jiggy open goal sends it up. It's on. What a shot there from Jiggy. Twenty meters out, steep angle. New York Kings are up by three. Oh, the jigsaw, but it ain't no puzzle. If you don't know Jiggy, that's what he does. Jiggy will hit it from any kind of angle, uh, famed for a lot of that offensive firepower, and especially once he gets into the bubble, even has a kind of a shot of his own, uh, scooping it up in, in a hook style, but just a tremendous talent is Jiggy, and that is nothing but threes so far to start this round, uh, start this quarter. Game sending us one up in the hands of Saluna. Saluna gonna go back to game. Game is gonna scoop. No! Oh, oh, gets a stop. That was gonna be picked up by Jiggy. Sending up it across in the hands of Heck. Heck is gonna get that one cleared out past the defense. This one's all the way down into the bubble. Flat bounce off the back wall. Acorn gets his pocket picked. There's too many pockets to pick there as that one's gonna get ultimately sent out. But in the hands of, a, of the uh, orange team here, Al moving in on the side of the bright side of the bubble. Sends in the shots off the post. Wasn't on its way in. Rosie Hope's gonna get it slapped out. And that one into the tube. Good defensive chain. Heck's gonna slap it away, but game gets it picked up here mid four and a half to go this game gets stunned up by jiggy a lot of back and forth right now nobody can maintain control of the disc honestly even even though they, these have been uh, open goals for these shots the, the defense is actually tremendous in the midfield uh, the amount of leeches and brawls and steals and interceptions there's another one we're seeing here so it's resulting in the threes from strambitsky but it's predicated off of so much uh, stellar play happening in that midfield i'm very impressed it's just once someone breaks free, that's when you have that open goal on the other end. Yeah. Yeah, I, both teams are getting caught in transition uh, perpetually. Uh, it, it's, this, is a, this is a tough game. This is a, this, this is a style of game. The, the game is happening at mid. Uh, the whole game is happening at mid. Saluna sending this one down. Uh, nobody in the area, though. I think there were. I think that was an intent. The intention there was for a stack or a boosted player to get down there to recover that one. Uh, but they didn't have that player down. I'm not sure what the the uh, miscommunication was. Game gets stunned out as he touches that one. Somehow gets it back. Gets this one pulled off the pocket pick there by Stram. Stram off of Game's head. This one loose again. Heck, getting that one touched. But Game gets it back. Game gets away. Try to send that one up, but a little bit rushed. Goes off the bow tie. 
And oh my it's goodness, just, it's that far side trap. Although Saluna sending us it across, game not able to recover. It's going to be Jiggy with the pickup and the send out. Uh, somebody in chat said, uh, Shem versus Game, the unstoppable force versus the immovable object. That's Shabitsky, the unstoppable force himself, gets that one in from 30 meters out. They are up by nine. Uh, the New York Kings are really running right now. And Strambitsky is a very movable object. You see how fast they got to that other side to find, guess what, another three. It has been nothing but threes thus far on these goals, these breakaway plays. So something's got to give right now. They've given up 12 points to the Kings. Cyclones trying to find their stride. Oh, this one's sent up. Oh, no. Rosie Hope getting a big interception, setting this one up. Oh, that one's off of the star block. Was trying to get it to Saluna, who was right at the edge of the bubble. Game's going to get a recovery. Saluna's on the floor here. Sends this one down right in the hands of Jakey. That was a, that was a, an ambitious pass. As Rosie Hope looking to track that one down. No, it's going to be Game there, recovering his uh, the, the, his own little uh, arrow there. As this one's loose for a moment, Game gets it back. Now moving up on the far side. Has a lot of room here, so he's just going to keep on walking. Now sends this one up. Rosie Hope with it here. Has Acorn cutting. No, good to go across here to game game gets by too many defenders i don't know how he does it behind the goal there i, I think that was a setup of the the intended target moved away now rosie is going to get it uh, recovered here on the the close in back line rosie across no pocket pick jiggy gets it cleared all the way out and that's another stop from Jiggy in that goal. A nicely done, but still retained by game and co and i think right now for the cyclones uh, struggling to find their offense but they have the potentially best player, as you said, in the world here, and especially in terms of the offensive moves in game. So I think they need to feed that beast right now and uh, get him some looks, if nothing else, to start this, this ignition maybe on a comeback in this quarter. Saluna sending some out. Rosie has it. Rosie bringing it in. Rosie's going to score it. Rosie's going to get the Orlando Cyclones' second goal here. Uh, the first one coming from Acorn. So Rosie gets that one with only a minute to go. Uh, this is... Oof. You know, the New York Kings are coming out. Basically, this is a game right now. Both teams are kind of operating off of uh, it's less strategy and more just who's winning the 50-50s, who's winning the 1v1s, because uh, everything, there's so much back and forth here. Neither team has the time to set up. Oh, my <laughs> goodness, game gets that one in. Finally going to punish something here in the final minute, and maybe, maybe an omen of the future. Absolutely, and a good omen indeed for the Cyclones scoring after being held scoreless for a rather long spurt there, long stretch of that quarter. They found two goals now, two more, in just the last 30 seconds or so. So wonderfully done to stay mentally strong, and as I mentioned, that's going to be a big part of this game over the course of a 32-minute match. Uh, Shram sending one down to the floor, did not have a lane, and they did not hit the antenna target, though. Oh! Oh my goodness, you know what happened? I can't believe that just... So uh, there was a player there near Al. Al got that one recovered from Strem. Well, I, here's what I, I don't I don't understand what just happened because so there are players in the goal. They were there. They thought there was a transition. They thought there was a turnover. They thought their teammate had it. So they start leaving to, to, to boost out, I think. And I uh, left that goal wide open to end the round there. So New York Kings are going to end the first quarter 15 to 8 over the Orlando Cyclones in their season Pro Series debut here and uh, with that quick word from our sponsors we will be right back make this the summer of no limit no stone unturned and no obstacle unconquered the summer of sand on the floorboard and mud on the tires where one wave introduced you to a thousand friends you didn't know you had and one spirit of adventure took you places you hadn't dreamed existed make this the summer you discovered there's only one Make this the summer of Jeep. Make this the summer event. These stats that we're seeing tonight. Oh, what a match so far. I think the New York Kings are, are really pulling it out. But I have a feeling that uh, the Cyclones are going to mix it up. And, and I think they're going to come back in the second second quarter here what do you guys think we saw a lot of uh people in the twitch chat there before the game even started saying uh, they think that strem is going to pop off strem bitsky here and well certainly <laughs> nine points tells that story uh two assists one save two steals and 20 stuns uh, <laughs> every category is already filled by this yeah, i was guy. gonna say in, in only Man. one quarter he has no eggs in the basket most players can't yeah. do that in a full three three set series 
Uh, I mean, number one pick, <laughs> number one pick. <laughs> Most well-rounded player in the game. Uh, that, I mean, he plays out there. Well, nice stop there. Al's going to get that red sent to the near side, but game with a recovery here. Game has to get this one sent over to Rosie. Rosie was not in the area. That one's a little bit off, and this one's going to be picked up by Heck, who turns that one around, but right back in the hands of game here. Game doing some jukes, gets someone across. Oh, the scoop there, trying to get it to Rosie. Not able to uh, recover on it, though. Saluna gets this one picked up. Saluna sending this one. Finally, they get a pass to Rosie. Rosie off the ceiling. The game. Game. Oh, that's three. The goal is actually open. <laughs> it's like three defenders there on top of game. They know how dangerous he is. As this one's going to get cleared out, and game gets there first once again. Uh, I believe game is stacking with Saluna as well, which is. Uh, they're very quick together. It's a really interesting pairing. Uh, as they both are just notable shots as Rosie sends this one across. Oh, the bounce, not favorable. Keeps it loose. A good stack there is going to get it picked up and sent back to mid there by Shrimp. Yeah, the thing here uh, about this team is a whole lot, maybe an open goal about to happen, uh, just picked off, is the fact that you do have tremendously fast players. You talk about the Saluna and Rosie uh, chemistry and the stacks that they've got going oftentimes there. You see them flying down the floor right now, perhaps. It's actually game uh, going there with Rosie, oh. and they're going to make it, I suppose, as it just gets uh, picked at the last yeah. second to turn it into a two. But it's still a nice hit. And just to finish the thought, too, you, you got Acord in there, of course. Uh, played... A long time on, on Anomaly and that they're already known as one of the fastest stacks in the world. So you got a lot of speed potential on this Cyclone squad. Speed of speed. Heck got that. Not only did he get the grab on that on that goal there, uh, he got the he scooped it. He, he, but he was moving so fast that he wasn't able to scoop it. Oh, my goodness. Shot there off the post. Going to get slapped out of the bubble uh, by Rosie Hope. Uh, Rosio uh, has been exceptionally strong on defense. In fact, she has five saves so far as game is going to get that one in off of Rosie's clear. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Oh, goodness. That was beautiful. And game with five points on the board as well. It's not going to be held down to single digits for long. I said it last game about uh, Mozzie, right? Well, you can apply that to players like game likely to end up with uh, 20 points on any given quarter, much less an entire match. So, Something to watch out for because they have made a nice comeback and now the disc oh back as it goes back and they will push it to a tie. Yeah, just like that. Just like that. Uh, was there, has, has there been a goal here? From, have, have the New York Kings scored at all in this round? I'm not sure. Have they scored? No, I mean, told no. I mean, told no. New York Kings are currently scoreless in round two, uh, in the second, in, in uh, quarter two, in the second quarter. The Shrem is sending this one down there to the excuse me, to the Valley, sending that one out in the hands. Oh, we try to get it to uh, Jiggy there, and it will turn over. Acorn with the pickup. Turning that one around, it will be all the way down and in. Collected here by Strem. Strem turning it right back around, but in the hands of Game there uh, with Acorn right behind him. Game uh, doesn't have any options in front. They held on for a little bit too long a second. Somehow they lose a handle. I believe it was off of a head, now Acorn gets it. Goal is open. Set over to Saluna, who gets it in. Wow. Saluna's going to hit that one for the two. That is, in fact, her first goal of the game here. And puts her team up into the first lead of the game, 17 to 15. That was so, so good from Acorn uh, on that find. I mean, I can only assume that the, the communication was just on point. Oh, yeah. But the, oh, yeah. the grab and then the ability to turn it into an immediate assist to punish an open goal. There was the window was was tight but they found that pass so quickly that it enabled a shot from saluna who painted it in that uh, that corner with excellence they're gonna try again but just miss unfortunately but nonetheless the scoring run just may continue yet as game overtakes and takes it up by four now what a run we're seeing by the cyclones dim we hey, what was the score at the end of the first quarter i should write this stuff down new habits new habits 15 to 8 11 unanswered points here 11 unanswered points. That's, that's, that's like, uh, was that four goals? Four goals? Three or four goals? Uh, unbelievable here from uh, from the Orlando Cyclones in the second quarter. They are yeah. just punishing. They are punishing. This is revenge for the first quarter. Strem not able to track it down. Game. Open oh, goal. No. Does not miss. Seven point lead. These are one of the situations where, and forgive me for not knowing, uh, my own rules as well. <laughs> this is when I would say timeout if it was available. This is a, a tremendous run. Tremendous run. It just they're, they're looking unstoppable. This is an entirely different dynamic we're seeing where it was almost relentless from the Kings to start off, but now they can't even get it to this side of the floor very often. Oh, no, they, 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 they absolutely. Yeah, this has been uh, just the second quarter has been sight all Cyclones. 14 points uh, unanswered so far as Jiggy sending this one across near side. 
Nobody's there, so Luna's gonna get there first and slap that one. Uh, trying to get it out through that tube. Game, not able to recover though. A couple stuns, he ultimately does. Game, sending us for now, is that gonna be all? I was literally about to quit my job. I was about to quit. I was about to walk out the door. What a stop! Ooh. Oh my goodness. As Rosio gets this recover, get a reset to Acorn here on the back line. Hey, Ow never quits. Not there, not in the goal. Just denying another attempt and a good steal by Strem. So Strem trying to be the calming force and there was definitely a force of nature in that first quarter. That's going to take a bunch of bounces as it nearly goes into the backboard. Rebounded by Ow. Oh Ow the quick spin. Ow the quick move. But the rebound from game. And now another one abound from Jiggy and Co. But they are struggling to find the disc control. Strem Bitsky doing just that now. Will up for a reset. This is smart because they know the time. Uh, it doesn't matter at this point. They just need to score. And with some calmness if they can the cuts the finish oh, no oh. rosy but the second one no hope it's up top and they finally drop a goal after how many minutes didn't we i gotta be honest uh, yeah that's a beautiful goal from heck i will be i will be honest about that a, a beautiful goal from heck uh but i'm gonna be real i think rosy hope is one of the most one of the most uh, uh underrated uh absolutely. defensive players in the game uh she has been absolutely unreal here and uh, it, it's just, it, 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 it's, I've seen this from her a million times before, and uh, I, I always act surprised, but I think it's it's because nobody, you don't hear a lot about Rosie Hope uh, as far as play style. You just don't, you just don't. And it's games like these that remind us, you know, there's so many players in this game that are so good that they're all, they, these are all the best players in the world. Of course, you know what I mean? It goes back to the rush thing. Oh, nice there setup there. Game to Saluna, and they're up by seven. And just to finish your thought there as well, I mean, you need to look no further than one. The fact that wherever uh, wherever Rosie is, uh, always uh, one of the master, you know, top teams. For that matter, you go back to the Contender Series land uh, back in, in June. Uh, she absolutely popped off like uh, I've seen few people do inside the goal at that LAN event uh, and defensively like save after save after save yeah. was just stifling. It was uh, one of the more impressive LAN performances I've seen firsthand. I mean, I, absolutely. As this one gets all the way in. Game there. Oh, is going to get a pocket pick by Strem. Strem will send that one out, but in the hands of Ow. Ow. Open goal shot. Hits the nugget. Makes its way to the near side. Still a seven point lead here to the Cyclones. A reset there. I think that was a setup. Uh, it's going to have to get uh, recovered there by Rosie. Who slaps that one out. Gets it right to Saluna. Saluna is going to dump this one in. They have a chain out. Looking for the last goal of the round here. Rosie tried to take that shot. Was looking for the anchor, but Hex going to get it stopped up. This one loose again. Rosie gets it recovered. Rosie just going to go for the reset here. 10 seconds. They don't need a goal, uh, but they could certainly use a goal. You always want goals. Goals, goals, goals. Game. Bringing this one in. Juking. Oh! oh. Ow. And with that, Correct. Orlando Cyclones are going to end the round. New York Kings only get two points on the board in that second quarter. Orlando Cyclones, 18 points in that quarter. With that, we'll be right back. <laughs> A lot of hard work goes into keeping things simple. We do the heavy lifting because when you're out there, you want everything to simply work. We build our machines tough to outmuscle the outdoors keep the adventure going. Introducing the new Kawasaki Terex KRX 1000 ES Side-by-Side. -side. Your world, your adventure. LAN event you do not want to miss is going to be March 18th through the 20th in St. Louis, Missouri. Bush Stadium is hosting the NEPA Charity Cup, supporting Special Olympics. Come on out to the Redbird Club for a LAN event that will put faces to the names that you interact with in the community and help support a great cause. Head on over to NEPAVRPro.com for more information. You guys, I had a chance this week to catch up to Gilligan, and he's an he, he's a very popular and has been playing a long time gamer. And these are the things he had to say. So let's take a listen. So you are uh, it was a really stupid thing back Legends, in middle school. Um, yeah, yeah, my it's friend not, and I, an honor, John, we used to run around the school before our extracurricular it's activities would start. <laughs> and we were young, and we would grab the teacher's yardsticks and play. You know swords and stuff and he was john of arc and i was sir killigan gilligan and i kept gilligan online ever since i started playing echo in december of 2017 
Uh, I didn't know anything about technology or Discord or anything like that. Um, I got a VR capable computer, found Echo because it was free, and quickly fell in love with it. And I've been playing it and almost only it ever since. Honestly, I expect to see a lot of uh, good competition. I mean, it looks from what I've seen, it's it, the rosters are fairly evenly spread. The way the NEPA series is going, um, with the with the draft like that, it helps even out the teams somewhat. I think, and I think the I think the competition could be entertaining. Honestly, finding finding teams teammates with good chemistry is is really important, and and oftentimes that's hard. That's why you see a lot of uh, you see a lot of roster changes go on historically, uh, and part of that is just chemistry. I was lucky. I was lucky enough when I was captaining one of the shacks that the the guys I was playing with, we all got along really well. We all played pretty similarly as far as our uh, mindset goes, and so just finding teammates that you enjoy playing with means a lot more than necessarily being with the best uh, teammates. I think like I think chemistry has a lot to do with the success of a team. If it, if you if you enjoy playing with each other, you'll go a lot farther than if it's just four guys that are really good. Um, I mean, honestly, the, the 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 players on these teams are they're all at the top, and it's I could easily see any of these teams taking the the championship at the end. And also depends, you know, sometimes teams have a bad day, so it and some and if that team has a bad day, at the same time the other team has a really good day, it's, it makes it really hard to predict, especially when the when the when the players are all at this high level. I I hesitate to make a prediction, but. Honestly, my bias wants to say you got to go with the Florida Laser Sharks because Venom's on that team, and Venom is a former teammate of mine. Yeah, uh, we actually uh, still play together on Sundays now as the season two while the Shacks roster. It's it's uh, Venom, Will I Am, and Blitz One Two Three Zero, which those th- that was three of the four main roster of the Florida Laser Sharks in VRML last season. Um, and honestly, it's difficult to watch them because I miss playing with them so much, but. Uh, it is a team that I, I can't help but root for just because of that, you know, former uh, connection there that, you know, these guys are my buddies. That's, that's who we still, that's who I still play with uh, when I, when I try to play, you know, seriously. And we are back in the arena watching the teams as they take a little break here. And we've got some lovely stats down there. Let's take a look and see what we have. We've got game leading with 13 points for the Orlando Cyclones. That's not a huge surprise out of what we've seen from him so far, Sir Dimwi. No, not not a huge surprise at all, uh, especially after that second that second quarter uh, was really something special there from the Orlando Cyclones. Uh, also notable, uh, I, did I just forget my point? I might have. Oh, no. Shots <laughs> taken. Shots taken is favoring the New York Kings 22 to 18, uh, despite the fact that they are down by nine points. And a lot of that, it's it's not just Rosie Hope, but it's a lot of Rosie Hope uh, making the big difference in this game, in my opinion, right now. And they are putting on a show for us right now on the screen. <laughs> Saluna and Rosie, they're all... Always great for entertainment, I tell you what. Such lovely people. Uh, I want to put this out there that uh, I did, in a scrim a few weeks back, uh, beat Rosie in rock, paper, scissors. Just want to throw that out there into the ether. Um, I'm the champ. All right, so I think the half is just about over, though. It is, it is, and uh, so is your career after that. After that, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, I, you know what? If I if I beat her in uh, rock paper scissors, I would brag as well. I'm a, let's be real. This is just uh, my jealousy coming out. Uh, but uh, yeah, it looks like we are going to get started here uh, in the third quarter, at least uh, momentarily. Uh, in fact, we have a few more moments. Uh, yeah, 17 seconds. So uh, they kind of uh, they juked us a little bit with that. Uh, maybe standardize that practice. A little more moving forward but uh yeah 11 a nine point lead here to the Orlando cyclones they had 18 18 almost almost unanswered points uh the new york kings were able to get a two in during that second round uh i don't know what they've been talking about i don't know what adjustments they need to make uh because clearly whatever they were doing in the first round worked and then didn't continue working in the second round uh so i'm very curious to see what adjustments they make uh, coming out into the second half 
Yeah, we shall see. Uh, I told you game was going to be a huge factor in that. Only had three points after the first quarter, and yet had 10 of those 18 uh, in the second. So definitely found his fire, and now seeing if he can fire off again. Surely it is. It's a goal off of Al, granted, but still game the shot, and they will gain another score to push him up 11. Yeah, this uh, Cyclones team here, not slowing down. Uh, they they won't. They will push the score up as high as they need to uh, to to win this game. Though it has been Orange's night tonight. The first few games uh, of the of the evening. The first one, Kansas City versus uh, Kansas City versus Florida. Uh, the Florida Laser Sharks. That is uh, Kansas City uh, won that game. Dallas Knights versus Montreal. Dallas Knights also in Orange won that game. Uh, so New York Kings were hoping to uh, prove the trend, but instead game is going to shut that idea down. Send this one out into the New York Kings zone. Shot there from Ooh. Saluna. Gets it in. 19 meters out. That's going to put her team up by 14 points a minute into the second half. It just doesn't stop. That faucet now is turned into just an absolute outpour of scores from a uh, all these players here on the Cyclones. And at this point, for uh, the side of the New York Kings, just need to re recognize the, the clock situation in that there's a lot of time, but have to be, I think, especially in this case, you know, rely on a little bit of the patience to slow down and just try to uh, find some quality looks. Uh, and it starts definitely with, with Strembitsky and an Al as, as well as their offensive, defensive anchors uh, kind of on both sides to be able to really turn this thing around and find some calmness here uh, for the rest of the team. Oh, what a play. Oh, they need a goal after that. Oh, it's off Ooh. of a head. Oh, what a stop there. That was going to get slapped out of the bubble. I can't believe they, they got that opportunity, though. Uh, that was that was I mean that was just that was by the seat of their pants. Game over to Saluna. Saluna getting stunned out there. Strem sending that one away. That one is all the way down. It's going to be flat bounce off the back wall. That's dangerous. Nothing but orange bodies in the bubble. They are going to get the first goal of the third quarter of the second half here. Uh, just a few minutes in. Just over two minutes in, and uh, they push back within 12, but still down by 12 are the Kings. There you go. Uh, like I said, for Strembitsky, uh, really need to see him get going again. And for the whole team in general, right? They were held scoreless for so long in the second quarter, but now opening up the third quarter, only a couple minutes expended, and now they've got the shot already. Strem had those nine points in the first, so want to see more of that for sure uh, from him. Saluna over to Acorn. Acorn loses the handle. Game gets it. Game still gets that pass off. I don't know how he got it off, but he did. Saluna there, far side. That's a juke away from them. Oh, no. An opportunity here over to Game. Rosie of the game. And Game will get that one in for another two. That's going to push the team back up by 14. And uh, this we, we were talking about this in the last game uh, between the Dallas Knights and the Montreal Freeze. You're getting to a point where you cannot be exchanging goals. You can't, you can't do the back and forth, one for one, one for one. You can't do it anymore. You have to start converting on their joust advantages. I absolutely do. And speaking of joust advantage, well, advantage loss. It's going to be taken by Acorn with a stun. Let's seeing if they can get it going. Game with just a quick, quick stun. Oh make my. it a double and make it some trouble into the goal. That's two more points on the board. 35 for Cyclones. You know, there was uh, somebody re somebody not too long ago, uh, somebody who might be watching, uh, asked me if I had any interest in returning uh, to competitive Echo Arena. And, uh, you know, I kinda, I'm kind of at an age now where I can let the kids play and kind of enjoy it vicariously, all this stuff. But goals like that are why I, uh, there's, there's just no reason for me to have the thought. There's no reason for me to have the thought. Uh, it's just Man. that... I just, you know, you know, like I, there's just, I, 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 as as much time as I could put in, as competitively, as competitive as I could get, I would never be that good, ever. It would, it would not happen. I don't have it in me. I'm, uh, maybe I'm too old. Although uh, Speedy B constantly proves me wrong on that claim. Ooh, uh, as game on. is gonna juke around here, bring that one in. Oh, pocket pick by Jiggy. Shout out Speedy V. Uh, that said. Come on, Divley. The, the water's fine over here in the competitive scene. Trust me. That said, it's Al and over to Stram. Oh, no! Oh, no. And a miss! Oh, and the goal is going to be denied! So that is a missed opportunity and a missed cue. That will be game taking it over, but now it's stun again. My goodness, just cannot uh, let off those pedals. Yeah, no, that was, uh, oof, that one's going to be, uh, he, he's, no one's going to have to remind Shrem about that, what just happened there. He, and knowing Shrem, he's not going to forget about it for a long time. <laughs> I feel bad for him. As game over to Rosie up, I mean, I dinged one from a few feet out, and that game didn't even matter, and I still remember it. As Rosie over to game, game over at the star is going to send this one in, edge of the bubble. Oh, too many bodies. Look at that. Look at that. They just, it's just clogged. 
it's just you know what's interesting i say it's clogged but it's like it's not clogged like a drain because when a drain clogs and nothing gets through but that's not we don't you know echo arena does not take place in reality it takes place in 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 virtual, virtual. <laughs> <laughs> there you go i wasn't even trying oh i'm gonna stop well, I hope these teams don't because we got a lot of time to go and man, this scoring output, this outburst is absolutely stifling. They've just, as you said, it's almost an inverse in Echo, right? You have so many in the goal, makes it almost uh, easier to get the oh. shots at, at times because you're just blocking off so many of the sight angles. Just the same, you get those ankle breakers where in Echo, it's not really ankle breakers so much as you're putting the brakes on as the offensive player who... Uh, Almost like a counter break. I don't know. There's a there's a lot of those weird things here in Echo, but that oh, is wow. not a strange sight whatsoever. Ow, another denial. So there's a defense. Offense comes next. That's what they need. Yeah, Shram gets this one cleared out though. Will be that chain. This time Rosie Hope there with it. I think that's Rosie Hope and Acorn getting there first. Uh no, it's Rosie Hope and Saluna, in fact. Saluna currently in the goal. Heck, bringing this one in. Gonna get sent out. Shrembitsky. Oh, 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 it goes the wrong direction. This one to the far side wall. I don't know what happened. I have no I, idea what happened there. I think, I almost want to say, I think it kind of got caught between deciding whether, whether to shoot or to pass. There was a little bit of a brief hesitation move in there and then kind of decided split second. Okay, no, I'm gonna shoot. And then when he shot, uh, hooked it a little bit because of that, I, I think. Ooh, that was a shot there. Heck took out the goalie thinking Shrem's shot was on the way in, but Heck was, didn't actually have a read on it. Uh, so uh, it, it ends up loose. Jiggy, though, going to get this one recovered in his own zone, the New York Kings zone, that is. Sends this one out. It's going to make its way all the way down, and then Cyclone's bubble here will be Cyclone's player getting their first at his game. Game getting away from Shrem. And uh, now turning this one around, they have a chain out. He does get it cleared out. The chain's going to get down there cleanly, and there's too many stuns in the backfield. Nobody, nobody had a chance there. Both, that was one of the best. Watch the minimap on this replay. Watch the minimap on the replay. Watch how the pairings work out. You've got two blue players down in the offensive zone by themselves, and then the two orange stacks each have a blue player with them that stuns them out. Look how beautifully that's executed on the minimap. That's just, that was just, that was just beautiful. And, and great call as well. It's the stack breakage can be supremely important on those breakaway plays. As long as you're confident and you have that, that forward stack, those forward players able to recover securely, uh, just making their lives easier by disrupting that defense as they try oh. to get back. Uh, Acorn causing some disruption as well, but a really strong lead. We're almost at that, uh, that, that 40 point mark that I mentioned before, and we're only at the end of the third quarter just about. So any points here will really help their case uh, for the Kings going into the fourth quarter. Yeah, uh, so, uh, so Rosie was going to get this one sent out. The bounce there is a little bit awkward. No, it wasn't. Uh, I just didn't realize where it hits. Luna juking around, wants to bring it in. No, goes over to game. Oh, no. It's uh, Strimbitsky. Got that one stopped, clears it out. Strimbitsky stops the Orlando Cyclones from hitting the 40-point uh, breaking point, Palador. And with that, we're going to go to a quick word from our sponsors. Access the largest motorsports inventory in America. We're authorized dealers for Can-Am, Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Sea-Doo, and more. Get the best deals these brands have to offer. Browse through our inventory to find exactly what you're looking for. Friday nights at 1030 Eastern, head over to nepavrpro.com slash late night for late night with Ivan Thrive. You never know what you might see when Ivan sits down with your favorite Echo players and teams. Go to Echo, I'm sorry, go to nepavrpro.com slash late night Friday nights at 1030 Eastern to catch late night with Ivan Thrive. I'm just so excited to get back into this game about Echo that that's all I have on the brain. So this game, you guys, the stacking is incredibly fast and we're seeing some inversion stacking as well. So they are upside down. Is that a, a massive benefit or is it just a different view of the arena? A little bit of both, kind of rock, paper, scissors type of thing, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Changing your angles up on the floor can indeed give you better shot angles. And just as well, uh, some of the best offensive players in the game know how to kind of play that balance of, you know, grabbing the disc and inverting themselves dynamically as a, in the middle of a match. Because if you think about it, you place an offensive player... Uh, it, it inverted offensive player on, onto a ceiling, suddenly the ceiling becomes a floor. Now, if the defender doesn't match that, it's a lot more difficult trying to mm -hmm. crank your head around and reach up above you than it is to be looking down or level. So there is certainly some advantages and points to that. 
That was actually how I answered the question myself. What a setup there to, to Acorn from Saluna. Acorn getting the one-timer behind the goal on the backboard. That's going to be your first goal here of uh, the fourth quarter, which does put the Cyclones over that 40-point mark there, Palador. Uh, so we get to test it once again as they are up by 22 points. Uh, but just to, to finalize that thought, that's how I tested it myself as a defender. Uh, uh, was uh, uh, I, I just forgot the point. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, the, the train just left the building. Palador, help me. Uh, we'll see the train getting out of the building now and no breaks on this one. Jiggy will find the goal. They're bringing it back within 20. That's seven minutes to make a mighty big scoring oh. run, whatever the case is. That is a great sign to start off the first minute, at least. I just, re I just remember this. I have to finish the thought. Uh, the, huh. the, the, I was, I was always, I always questioned: Is it, is there an advantage to coming out upside down? Uh, now, you, some could argue yes. Some could argue no. The reason I know there is because as a defender, when I was defending folks who were upside down, I had a harder time, and I had to match their orientation to get to even the playing field again. And that told me I knew without a shadow of a doubt there is an advantage. Oh, shot, strap. <laughs> that would have been. Oh, that would have turned. That would have been. That would have turned the tides. I would. I tell you right now, that would have been a, a game changer there. As Al is going to handle this one on the far side, the chain is going to stop up. It passes it back to Shrem. Shrem back to Al. Al ducking that chain. Looking to send this one up. They have one deep, but that's, that player is covered. They have Shrem there at the end. of. The, they have no options here. They do send this one over to Jiggy, but Jiggy is immediately covered. Has to get this one back to the back line. That's how you do it, though. I mean, you're going to do a little give and go like that. They get to the edge of the bubble here. Shrem juking around, trying to get by game. Oh, the shot there is going to be off of the post as that one's going to be slapped away. Yeah, so, so far, not able to get the, the scores off quite as quickly, really for either side, a bit of stalemating after those uh, one goals per team here. But I think that's really to the advantage now of the Cyclones, as they will try to take some offensive advantage here on the defense, who is currently uh, all kinds of bothered in the goal. There it is, game securing another one. But really, uh, it just comes down to that fourth quarter clock management. It's going to be really really tough because uh, every single second that is expended off that clock for either team it's still going to be in the benefit of blue yeah and uh a 22 point spread here that puts the uh, the point of no return at two minutes uh so i mean that that is that is so hard uh to to respond to is that one's just gonna be given away uh, Al gave that one to Rosie there. Uh, so Rosie looking to send that one off, hits the lip, gets it back, sends it through again. Game with it there. Open goal, sends it in. Does oh, man. not miss. 25 points. Game stealing a little bit from Saluna because Game has 22 at the moment. A lead score doubled up over uh, the next highest score, which is Strembitsky with 11. Uh, game has absolutely woken up here in uh, quarters two, three, and four. Yeah, he really has. Uh, you know, it, well, anyways, Jiggy, sending it near side. Hack not able to play it. Disc is loose. Game gets it picked up. Oh, game gets his pocket picked by Strem. Strem sends that one out. Boom. Strem also. Well, he doesn't miss that one. 22 point spread, though, still in favor of the Cyclones. Yeah, still a nice stabilizing shot there from Strembitsky. Hit with uh, confidence, and that will give him 14 points there. After that quick uh, first quarter, started off with nine, but just has not been able to score too much in the latter couple. Uh, that said, every single point still will count, of course, because, you know, these players, no matter what uh, the end results are, you still want to be able to, to come out, you know, feeling good about what you did, and uh, nothing else carried over into your next matches as well. Oh, indeed. Acorn over to Rosie. Four minutes to go here. Rosie setting up. Ooh, somebody who got set up there. That was uh, Acorn gets that one in. Uh, that's going to put, it's going to double the score here to 48 to 24. Uh, less than four minutes to go here. 24 point spread. That is, what, 220? Yeah, minute 20. I, shh. I got nothing. On the Monopia, that's what that was, I think. Uh, we educate here on stream. But that said, on this rollout, three and a half remaining, and just another good cutoff. Look at that dangerous double uh, stack there, just able to break things off as they now make maybe have a breakaway play. Game with another uh, possession, has a few there in the bubble, opts for that cloud reset instead, where Rosie brings it up the floor, handing it off there to a corner, and one more pass, and bring it from the oh front my. to the back, and now they've got that 50-point total there at the half-century mark. I'm just, I'm closing my notebook. That's it. I'm not saying that's not a GG. I just, that goal there, what game just did.
Uh, that is, there's just, you're, you're, I don't know how you come back from that mentally. Uh, that, that, that was just, to, to, to bring that in, you go over the top and then down to the bottom, uh, bottom corner pocket. I mean, you see, that's how it works out. They immediately turn it over. Uh, Cyclone sending the near side trap. Game gets it picked up. Saluna slaps that one away. We'll get it down to the New York Kings zone here, all the way down and in. The players are going to chain after this one. Too many bodies. <gasps> oh, Saluda taking that shot. Goes just wide. Acorn with the near side. Goes behind the goal there to Saluda. We'll get another one in for the two. And then it's now, I can't, math at this point, is it 18, I think? 28? I'm not even sure. Uh, 30, yes, 28 point spread. That is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, the numbers absolutely popping off there. But I, I like as well how it's still yet through this. They're not coasting through it. I mean, they're executing nice uh, fundamental plays there. You know, Saloon had a quick release, but guess what? Acorn was on the other side filling the lane as they both approach the goal. So still positioned correctly because even as it missed, well, guess what? You have the rebound. Then the other fundamental play, which is a say across right back to Saluna and the nice uh, easy goal. So they're playing... Uh, Despite this, the fact that they're scoring in spades, they're playing this very fundamentally sound as they go for another backboarded play. There's Saluna again, and up to a uh, lucky 13 for Saluna. Yeah, she's, yeah she's one of only three players in this game with double-digit points on the board. Uh, this game, Shram and Saluna. And that's what, kind of what I've noticed as well. Uh, the, the team's winning tonight. Uh, all the teams have had at least one player with a ton of points. Every single team tonight has had at least one player with a ton of points on the board, uh, but the winning teams have had two. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're seeing kind of play out here with Game and Saluda, both with a ton of points on the board. Uh, whereas over on New York Kings, it's, it's kind of only Strum with a ton of points on the board. Uh, they're, they're all contributing. They're all doing a really good job. I mean, seven saves to Al, that's a lot. Uh, and that, 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 can be the, that can be the catalyst for winning a game is it saves on the board. But this is a... Uh, this is Orlando Cyclones. After that first quarter, somebody got angry. <laughs> somebody got angry and used that as fuel, as a, as as a, as a superpower here. As Saluda is going to get stopped up there at the edge of the bubble. We are at, we we're long since out of mathematical time. For anybody wondering, uh, in this 28 point spread, maybe a, uh, no, it's going to be picked up here by game. Uh, less than 40 seconds to go. Orlando Cyclones have made a statement tonight. They are absolutely doing just that. Uh, Orlando psychs out all these teams that are watching here tonight, no doubt, because this has just been an absolute uh, demolishing series yeah. of quarters coming in. They are just knocking him down. I mean, it started off with the, the Kings just uh, able to get that early lead in the first quarter and it was looking, looking mighty fine, but then it's like they hit a sudden wall. And then the floodgates, the floodgates just opened. Uh, we're talking again, nearly 60 points match here coming in from the Cyclones, and that is immense. Immense. 30 point spread here, Cyclones. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I'm going I'm to be real. I'm, I'm going to be a little too honest right now. After this game, I expect the Cyclones to go all the way. I mean, fully, fully all the way this season. Uh, this, is, this is a team. This, their, their draft picks were perfect. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Nobody's, nobody else comes close. Uh, some, some teams come close. Cyclones draft picks after watching them tonight, perfect. That's all I got. Okay, I'm not going to <clears throat> say, I am going to say something. I, I kind of called it. If you remember after the first, after the first quarter, I, you know. I was called crazy in the Twitch yeah. in the Twitch chat, but I don't know. I just there's something there. I think their relationships. Uh, I don't know. They're just there's something about this team. So, anyways, you guys know what time it is. It is the dominant turkey time. So, what do we have? What do you think? I mean, do I have to pick one? <laughs> because you do. It's. it's <laughs> says who? This this wasn't in the contract. <laughs> uh, well, maybe it was. That said, though, just just statements, statements uh, coming in from the Cyclones team. And I think for the dominant Turkey, I mean, you got to give it to, to game just on stats alone, if nothing else. But it doesn't tell the whole story is a thing, right? Because there's so much. It was very much predicated off of like originally Rosie Hope had that great uh, defensive uh, set in the earlier half. And it kind of spurred on game to start doing his beasting and uh saluna you know getting up there with a 13 and then acorn not able to hit double digit points but still has the most assist among the team so therefore the turkey 
I'm not sure. It's Thanksgiving. Everybody gets a turkey. <laughs> and if that's not a correct answer, then sue me. <laughs> I'm hungry. I, I, I am gonna. I am gonna. I am gonna uh, disagree a little bit. Only kind of. Because uh, yeah, I mean, you can see on the board there. It, it's uh, hands down game. Uh, I mean, it, although I, it feels it feels a little cheap to go with that pick because basically any game game plays in, he's probably going to be the dominant turkey. Uh, but I mean, you look at the stat board, it's not d beyond uh, points from anybody else. Also has a ton of saves on the board, a ton of assists. He's not just a goal scorer. He's not Alexander. Uh, he's not Ovechkin. You know, he, he's 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 like he's Excuse the best me? of Ovechkin and Crosby. I know it's it's a oh, hockey dear. reference. I, I, I just I can't. Uh, I, I know. I just will land with me. <laughs> I know, but uh, I gotta go to game. Although as my, I really, I really wanted to give it to Rosie. I really did. Uh, but saves alone, I don't think are enough to unless you know, unless that's the crux of the game was on saves. Uh, you know, her 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 her, her defensive performance, her backline performance was 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 phenomenal. This is a player that we need to talk about more. We need to talk more about Rosie Hope. She's one of the best defenders in the game, hands down. Uh, but defense alone isn't going to get you the, the dominant turkey award. You got to be playing. You know, you got to have that kind of performance on both sides. Generally, and a game is that player. I think tonight. Yeah. And I just touch real quick, real quick on that too. I think you you hit it on the head. It's almost like, again, I'll go go to the basketball refer references as I often do. But like uh, like LeBron averaging the the LeBron stat line, right? It's you do it for so long over the course of an entire career, like Game has been doing uh, across whether ESL, VRML, uh, or now Pro Series. You do it so long, it's it's almost easy to not appreciate it as much because you expect it, right? You expect that stat line, that monster stat line every time. So, you know, your answer is not wrong either. I just, I, I like being neutral what I can. I hate singling people out. No, I, I can appreciate that. Course. But like, you're right, you know, it, it's dominance and it's a constant dominance. It's scary. Yeah. It's scary. Well, that was some fantastic Echo Arena play tonight. You guys join us back on Saturday, November the 13th at 7 Central to catch three more games. We will have the St. Louis Hustle taking on the Austin Burners, LA Destroyers versing Denver Raptors, and the Chicago Wizards going up against the Nashville Legends. So those are bound to be incredible games as well. As always, thank you guys, Sir Dimwi and Palador, for joining me. We will see you on Saturday.